Um, well, I'm good to go whenever. We can just start whenever I press new game here. This is going to be a dedicated glitch showcase run, so there's no official timing. We can start whenever I press new game. And it's going to count us down from three. So three, two, one, go. Let's go. Yep, here we go. So um, the thing that uh, I am most excited about, and we already slightly touched on it, is whenever there's Breath of the Wild speedrunning on a GDQ event, it's usually always a snapshot. It's a snapshot from where the game stands right now. Mm -hmm. um, and that obviously always evolves. Like this one year people used this strategy to move around, this other year people used this one. Um, but there's actually a lot of strats that have never made it into one of those runs because they were found and then something else was found that is, was like more optimal for a specific run and it never was really shown. And I'm going to be basically sh showing everything here. So and obviously when I say everything, this is impossible. There's like so many glitches. I picked out a lot of them that I think are either impressive to look at or even some that I think are very easy to learn for people at home that maybe want to learn a new glitch uh, to show off, uh, which is why I'm going to be taking extra time to explain everything. Yes. And that's what we make a lot of time for. If any of you here uh, tend to watch the show, have watched episodes before, you will know that we are... Um, we we love speedruns, but we love learning about the speedruns and the thing behind the things behind that them, the glitches that go into them. Snake. So we're not about PBs on the show. We're about like the actual breakdowns, and it's so much more fun. So we always have people coming in being like, "Why aren't they going faster? Why do they stop?" And it's like, "Well, you see, we want to get into the meat of it." So that's what we're. That's what exactly, we're exactly. So, so in this first Jason, room, what's the um, first thing we're gonna do? The first thing we're going to do is we're going to be escaping the Shrine of Resurrection. And usually people do that by going through the door. Uh, that's the that's the version that makes sense. But um, we're not going to be doing that. We're going to be clipping through this wall. So basically when a run starts, um, we immediately do the first glitch. And the one that we're going to be doing is a scope clip. This is actually a thing in many different speedruns when you use first person in a game. Oh, in this case, the scope feature. Uh, usually Link gets like placed behind the camera. The camera gets positioned where Link is, moving Link slightly back. So by running into the corner of this wall and then opening the scope at the right time, we can basically clip through the wall. And this is extremely useful because not only is there another door we would have to open, which is a 40 second cutscene, but the cutscene trigger for the big opening cutscene that everybody knows, it shows the logo, it shows you the massive overworld. It's a very small cutscene trigger, and by clipping out of this room and then climbing up the wall on the side here, we will be able to completely skip this cutscene throughout the entire playthrough. Uh, unless we come back here and uh, enter the cutscene trigger, we won't be doing that, which um, is going to be in our favor because this cutscene um, has a flag basically attached to it that tells the game to stop at 5 a.m. So this is how the game looks at 5 a.m. The game wants the opening cutscene to always look like this. It's like very pretty with the sun. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it looks very um, nice. But by dodging that cutscene, the game will never start the time. So it will always be 5 a.m. And this is actually specifically nice for like a showcase like this. Everybody that has played this game will know that it becomes a lot harder at night. Because at night we have these like random spawns of the skeleton enemies. Uh, the keys or like the bats start flying around everywhere. They can be super annoying, specifically the electric mm -hmm. ones. So well, having those out of the way is nice. So for 100%, doesn't that mean you have to start the timer though? Or do you not do it right yes. away? Yes. No, you do. Uh, in 100%, in you would watch that cutscene. Okay. Uh, but we're not going to be doing that today because mm -hmm. the content that I'm going to be playing um, doesn't need a time, the time to start. Right. Awesome. And um, <laughs> Another big advantage of this is because we haven't watched the first cutscene, um, the weather is also going to be consistent, which is great because everybody knows how bad rain can be and it's only going to be raining in specific areas that are hard coded for it to right. rain in. Um, like uh, the Zora's Domain, basically. For example, exactly. That It would still be raining there. And but, the, like the, the plains with the... Um, like mushroomy trees. Those ones, that would still work. It would still be thunderstorming there. And there's this other like shrine where you have to get struck by lightning. Oh, right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That would also still, uh, yeah. would still rain there. But in most of the overworld, it wouldn't be raining. Okay, so I'm just moving, 
yeah. along here pretty much. Um, I'm moving towards one of the shrines. And the thing is this. Zelda just talked to us and told us to go and follow the Sheikah Slate. And the Sheikah Slate is currently showing us the location of the Great Plateau Tower. Which, um, if we open the map, we don't have the map right now. It's like over here. So I'm not really there right now. I'm going to the Stasis Shrine. And the reason I do this is because it's faster. And this is something we do in the speedrun. Because um, activating the Great Plateau Tower comes obviously with like lots of cutscenes. And then mm -hmm. once you get those cutscenes, when you land on the ground, the um, old man, the mysterious old man shows up and uh, tells us what's, what to do. But in right. speedruns, we go to the shrine right away. There's only one problem, which is we can't enter. Um, because the light here is still off. Uh, you can't actually enter the shrine yet. Um, <laughs> so what do we do? We have to somehow find a way in any way. And this is where like the first big glitch happens. And this is uh, what we call shield clipping. And it uses a mechanic called skew. So yeah, I just okay. did a shield jump on this like sloped wall. This is a... Um, a pretty steep slope, and I shield jumped kind of against the slope. Okay. But because I never properly ended the shield serve by like pressing B, the game has remembered Link's position during that shield serve. So he was basically shield serving against the wall now. If I now jump, shield jump, and unequip my shield, that position on that wall will be replayed. You will see this here when I unequip, how Link was kind of like flicking to the right. I'll do it again, Whoa. just so people can see it better. Flick to the right. That was the position he was in when I was shield surfing on the slope. And when this position gets replayed, after it gets replayed, Link also flicks back. And that flick back is what we use to push Link through walls. Oh, wow. So I shield surf there at a specific position to now be able to set Link up accordingly towards the wall, do the shield jump again. And if I do it right, which stasis clip can be weird sometimes, that flick will push me inside the wall. And now what? the so door... The, I'm sorry, using the axe, does that help with your position? Yeah, yeah that's just for the, the setup to actually position Link um, okay. Okay. on the wall accordingly. Awesome. So this is where they, where they kind of messed up. Like They disabled this... Uh, they disabled this uh, terminal, but the elevator is not disabled. So we can actually um, just enter the elevator. Which looks kind of funny this way, because Link is just kind of walking in place. <laughs> but you just have to examine it and you're good to go. You yeah. To <laughs> yeah. Eventually he will enter. <laughs> Amazing. And um, the thing is, if we do this for all four shrines, we will still get the paraglider. And I can nerd out because we have like some long cutscenes here a little bit about the Great Plateau. Um, okay. The Great Plateau skip has always been the holy grail specifically for any percent speedrunning because 50% of the speedrun is doing the Great Plateau, watching these cutscenes and unlocking these runes. So the problem is, and people always misunderstand this. I think Gymnas did a video on this very early on, which is still the best explanation. The Great Plateau is, around the Great Plateau is not a barrier. The Great Plateau is basically like an inverted death cube, which sounds scary, but it is kind of what it is. So when you start the game for the first time, um, as long as you're on the Great Plateau, you're good to go. Whenever you're anywhere else in the world but the Great Plateau, let's say in Hyrule Castle, in a Death Mountain, in Zora's Domain, mm -hmm. the game will void you out and send you back to the Great Plateau until you have the Paraglider. As soon as you get the Paraglider, yeah, that inverted Death Cube will not be there anymore and you can go wherever you want to go. And um, there has never been a way to skip this. You can actually leave the Great Plateau for a little bit and chill in like specific places of the world. But um, as soon as you um, try to move away a little bit further, as soon as you leave that cube, you will get voided out, end up back on the beginning of the Great Plateau. Okay, so you, you have to do these shrines. You have to do these shrines. And uh, you can also not, this is something that people ask, you can also not skip the rune back there in the beginning and just walk here. Uh, because the monk will literally tell you to get the rune. It won't give you the spirit orb until you get oh. the rune as well. So you can't skip any runes, you can't skip any monks. Um, 
And I talked about earlier that there is actually ways now to enter shrines that are still underground. So some people ask, hey, can you not enter the DLC shrines? The DLC has like four shrines on the Great Plateau. Can you not enter those early and then get the paraglider faster this way? And you can't because what the game tracks for to, in order to decide if it wants to give you the paraglider is not spirit orbs, but, and we'll see this in a second here, um, it checks for how many shrines you have completed. Oh. Interesting fact here. We wait a little bit. To, this is for every shrine. We wait a little bit to skip the cutscene because it's faster. But here, if we see the shrine symbol, there's a spirit orb symbol and a shrine symbol. The shrine symbol is what the game checks for. This has to be at four. So the game will give you the paraglider. But DLC shrines don't increase that counter because 120 is the max. Mm -hmm. um, so there's no way, basically, right now to skip the Great Plateau and we have no lead. Uh, it's probably not going to happen for a while. But we, we never know with this game. But that's at least where we stand right now. So we have to do all four basic shrines and get the runes. Um, so now you've never met this person um, based yeah. on how you played and you just ask him for a paraglider. <laughs> exactly. And I have no idea who this could possibly be. It just seems like a, a suspicious old man. Of course. No idea. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's uh, as far as the, old, uh, the, the Great Plateau skip is concerned. Again, there is technically ways to leave this plateau for a little bit, but you won't get far. And... Oh. All of the theories, like even if you technically found a way to wrong warp into the final boss fight, the second you would get there, you would still get voided out because you don't have the paraglider. So it's it's looking really bad mm, as far as it's concerned. But let's talk about some movement glitches. So we have now clipped through the wall. We've gotten our first rune and stasis has in the past been the most useful rune for movement because you can use it on an object, charge that object up. Uh, and in this case, I'm going to change the direction of the object a little bit and then just ride the boulder, for example. That's like the most, the, that's the classic way to move around in the game. Stasis an object and use that momentum to our advantage. Right, but you can't usually stay on it directly. You have to, don't you often like do a jump right before or something? It, it just matters that you basically stand in the right spot. Like there, I tried to stand basically exactly in the direction the arrow was sending me. So there's like no collision i was just like still standing on top of it that works pretty well okay great but um the next strat is going to be a little bit different and this has been shown off at gdqs before so this is a bullet time bounce <laughs> let's yeah. pause for a second because usually people this split and this is exactly a good point for why this show is great in my opinion <laughs> this split has like six tricks right in like a minute there's like six major tricks in a minute and they just happen and when you see this in a real run you don't even know what's happening but right. we actually get to slow down and talk about this so a bullet time bounce is a trick where we 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 hit an enemy with our shield in bullet time and the enemy is usually ragdolling so he's like falling over when the enemy ragdolls the hitbox of the enemy pushes link away and this always happens. If you just shield jump on this Bokoblin, it will push Link away like a tiny bit. But bullet time in this game messes up the speed that you get from this interaction. If this interaction happens in bullet time, so Link lands on a shield on an enemy in bullet time, he goes really far, like really far. Can you explain just just a, a, another definition of bullet time again? So bullet uh, time in this game is just basically using your bow midair. <laughs> If you do that, the game slows down. Oh, it slows down, right. Right, and you can um, you can aim at your targets better. Right. That, that's, that's what bullet time is called. And uh, because the time gets slowed down, it's easily uh, done probably that the game does some miscalculations of the speed. So um, this trick only works on frozen enemies because frozen enemies are the only enemies that when you hit them with a shield, they fall over. With the only exception of the red Bokoblin. This is the weakest enemy in the game and a normal shield jump on top of them will make them fall over or ragdoll as we call it. And thankfully there's three red Bokoblins here. So I'm going to lure these Bokoblins in a spot by shooting my arrow on the ground and then shield jump on top of them. And just before I hit them, I will use my bow button to get into bullet time. Um, so I, I, this can take maybe one or two tries. So I'm, I'm going to shoot specific spots here, wait for them to walk up. And then just as I'm about to hit them here, I went to the bullet time, right? Mm -hmm. So as soon as I'm going to collide with this Bokoblin, there's going to be a little orange spark. I'm going to press Y, which is the button that makes Link shield spin. That will stop the bullet time from being active. 
and I messed it up because I pressed it too early because I was too much too focused on explaining. But you know, obviously, <laughs> also usually I don't pause the game right before, so this is not how this looks like. Right. I would do it, the we, same steps again now, but without the pausing, um, and then we will actually see Link go into the skies. Right. We've I've definitely had other guests that have that that have that happen as well. They're like, wow, usually I don't pause, and it's much more consistent because we're just exactly. going. So we're drawing them over, and then you, yeah, do the hit, and then you fall, and right. And this is how far we go now, pretty far. Uh, obviously, this is not how far you usually go. The only reason we go this fast because of the bullet time. So we mm -hmm. use bullet time to speed Link up a lot. And now we're in the air and we realize we don't have a glider. So this is kind of bad because even <laughs> though we are going really fast, the game still keeps track of fall damage. Thankfully, there's a way to prevent this too, which is um, by doing something called a fall damage cancel. So by throwing your weapon, like I did there, you can already see Link just basically was about to throw his weapon away. And then unequip an item, for example, the shield, the fall damage will not happen. Uh, this is, I don't know exactly the game mechanics that happen there, but essentially the second when I unequip the shield there, the game uh, recalculated the fall damage. So the second I did that is when the game actually thought this is where I started falling from. So it was only like a meter or something. So I didn't take any fall damage. Interesting. Yeah, it must be like priority based. Yeah, something along those lines. And. It's actually good that this failed because I didn't even get to explain it. This is going to be another shield clip. I'm still going to go a little bit faster because it's cold here and we don't have gear to protect us from the cold. Right. Might as well pause. <laughs> but same mechanic. There's a slope here. I just used my shield and jumped on that slope. So this skew position is saved again. So the difference here is uh, we can actually go for something here called an extended shield clip. And I don't know if my skew is good for this it doesn't look great right now nope let me get rid of my skew yeah oh okay um looks like i was waiting um on my end but it looks like uh it was not on my end so i just wanted to make sure <laughs> Um, looks like Lim is um, not with us for the moment. Uh, we'll see what happens. I know, everybody, hang oh, on. It's oh, no, oh, no. Oh, no. Is it back? Okay, here yeah, we go. Yeah. Hi, Lim. Hello, hello. Okay. Hello. Uh, yeah, looks like things are still kind of correcting. Um, <laughs> so see. Okay, Lim thank you. Before. This this should only happen once. I don't know if there was like sometimes I get this random reset, but it only happens rarely. And I think that was a perfect though, because we're still on the ideal frame for me to explain this. I never unpause the game. Okay, woo. Um, okay, let's go. Which is great. Okay. So so this um is the frame I'm looking for. Uh, it's again a shield jump, and um by pausing the game exactly on this frame, I'm able to do six backflips and do nothing. Uh, this actually happens sometimes. The uh, extended shield clip is pretty hard, but the advantage is kind of obvious. In the previous shrine, when I went for the clip, uh, I was only able to clip into the side of the shrine, and then I still had to actually enter the elevator. Mm -hmm. But if you get the extended shield clip, and again, it's frame perfect and not super consistent. Lots of runners won't go for this, but I wanted to show it off. Let's see again. This should be the right frame. Link is like half in the wall. Yes. Not not getting lucky yet, but you can see the idea. So th this wall, unfortunately, is actually hopefully I got a save here uh, because my shield is also breaking. This wall, um, the door wall, is thicker than the wall on the side. So the side wall is thin. We can clip through with a normal shield clip, uh, which I did for the stasis shrine, the first shrine. Right. But um, the uh, the door is thicker. So you can't just, um, I'm panicking now whenever like something is happening on my stream, but I think it should be fine. Um, the, the wall is thicker, so um, we need that extended shield to make this work. I hope I can get it. It looks a little bit cursed right now. I, now I'm too committed though. It's okay. I mean, it, again, feel free to take multiple attempts for stuff like this. And then also, um, my question yeah. was going to be, why mm -hmm. the door in this one and the wall in the other one? Because I know you said that it is different at points of entry or like, you know, this one um, is So in stasis, in stasis, after we, um, 
in stasis after we clipped through the wall, I was able to kind of enter to the elevator right away. So I could actually enter the elevator. We remember Link was like kind of stuck in the ground. For Cryonis, you can't do that because the elevator is too high. So you have to do sh so you have to do two shield clips usually. Okay, I don't know what's going on at this point. Um, you have to do two shield clips to um, make it to the elevator. Okay. But um, if you clip through the door, that is obviously not the case. Okay, we eventually got it. But uh, usually that either works first try or it doesn't. But we made it eventually. My only problem right now is my shield. We might have to get a little backup. Um, right, because it's low. But yeah. Okay, awesome. Well, there you go. Okay, so it's the same concept as the first one, just at a different angle. And like you said, the wall is... And it's frame perfect. The other one is not frame perfect. You just have to unequip your shield. Um, but hitting that right frame to be stuck in the door. So what basically happens is you, you are stuck in the door and um, you do another shield jump mid-air. That's why it's frame perfect. I have to time when I'm halfway through the door and I do another shield jump mid-air. So it's basically two shield jumps stacked on top of each other. We just didn't, it was just very hard to tell that this, that you did that second jump because you were probably in the middle you, of it. Exactly. You, can, it. you yeah. can't really see it as a jump because when it happens, you're like in the wall. Okay, this is going to be really hard um, because my shield is probably going to break on me. Oh, okay. But let's see what I can do. Ideally, what we would do here is do this little surf and then jump from the rising cryonis block to reach the wall of, oh. I have no idea how that still worked, but I'll take it. <laughs> uh, I did not think I had enough height there, but we still got it. So we did basically a shield jump of the rising Cryonis block to get even more height to take that little shortcut. So instead of going like around, we can jump up right away. This was like a super early strat in any yeah, how percent. Do you, how do you make sure that your timing is correct to get that like maximum height? It's a little lenient, but not very lenient. I think when people first start learning any percent, this is surprisingly one of the hardest tricks. Yeah. Like the, the bullet time bounces where you fly through the entire map look really cool, but they're honestly easier, a lot of them, than what this just was. But with muscle memory and like understanding how the cryo block, cryonis block, uh, rises from the water, you will be able to right. understand it. And I feel like just even the timing switching between like get activating the cryonis and being able to jump on it and like like do the shield jump with the in time i guess i i should say exactly trying to do it all in time before it gets too high up um i think i feel like it would be difficult there's another bullet time Gone. yeah i was focusing on the timing there because this one is pretty tight timing i got a really good angle though so if we get super lucky i doubt it but if we get super lucky i might be able to show up something else um, this is the almost ideal angle. You can have a little bit more height. I can't believe that this worked out. <laughs> wow. So <sighs> this is pretty rare. This is what we call unloaded magnesis, and it just walked in, right? Uh, the how? reason I was yeah. able to do that is because I went there so fast that the shrine wasn't loaded in properly. I couldn't <laughs> explain there, because if I had paused the game, uh, the shrine would have loaded in. Yeah. But this is actually rare. Um, so how do you Nowadays, use it uh, So usually you clip as well. And for this one, most runners go for those two shield clips. The only shrine that people clip in through the door is Cryonis because, like I said, that strat is hard. It's frame perfect. And um, for Cryonis, um, it at least is somewhat consistent. For the other shrines, people go for the double clip. I will also do that. Actually, I won't do that for bombs because I'm going to show something else. But... Um, yeah, that was really cool, actually. I did not yeah. expect that to happen. Uh, that awesome. I need to also talk about the fact that what I'm doing here is the original any percent route. The current world record uses this route, but there's currently some people are currently working on a change uh, of the any percent route with a new strat that I haven't shown yet. I will explain it completely after the Great Plateau. Okay. Um, <laughs> because I wanted to take some time for that. That's the strat that I talked about, the one that wasn't shown during the last GDQ. But yeah, this is this is the route that the current world record uses for any percent. And these uh, this unloaded magnesis shrine would kill countless runs. Like even if you go there all the way, like I did, sometimes the shrine still randomly loads in, and then you obviously lose time. This was like the oh. fastest possible because I didn't even have to clip; I could just run in. Yeah, I see. So, yeah, somebody wanted to know how much time it saved, like for you to land and actually go in unloaded. 
It really depends. I, I'd say for most people, this saves like 10, 15 seconds because it's usually how, uh, how long it takes most people to set up the clip uh, and then actually do the clip. But if you're really fast at the clip, you get everything first try, you're super quick, it doesn't save, it maybe saves like more like eight to 10, but it definitely is nice. And also the yeah. Magnesis clip is one of the most annoying ones. So being able to not have to do that is great. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we... Um, have made it past Magnesis, which is the third shrine. There's still one more shrine. And we're going to be using Stasis again for this. Um, which I used earlier. But this time we won't be going up. We will be going horizontal. We're basically building ourselves a little surfboard with this uh, metal slab. And then we're going to be going for another one of those bullet time bounces. This one here is a bit annoying because we, as you can see, we don't shoot an arrow first, we just kind of wait for this Bokoblin to walk up to us. Um, and his back will be facing the perfect direction for us to go to the bomb shrine. Or towards oh, nice. the bomb shrine. That's awesome. I see. And again, the fall damage cancel, I explained that earlier. Right. Throwing a weapon and then unequipping your item allows us to avoid taking fall damage here. Now, this is going to be interesting. I don't know. Okay, let's hope for the best. Okay, I, what I did there is when I shield jumped on this wall to again set up a shield clip, I unequipped and then re-equipped my shield super quickly. This way sometimes you can save durability. Obviously each every weapon and even shields in this game have durability. Right. By quickly unequipping and re-equipping mid-air, you trick the game and you don't lose durability. If I didn't do that, it would probably, um, okay. would probably be broken now. Mm -hmm. Ooh, but I didn't actually, it looks like I didn't get skew. Yep, you can see Link, when I'm shield jumping here, is not moving at all. There's no flick like earlier. Oh, yeah. uh -huh. So we'll have to do this again and hope again that our shield survives. Looks good. And we'll try this again. And this time we got in. And this is a, this is a showcase, right? Like now I can't enter the elevator. Oh. It's too high. It's too high. Right. Like this is the case for the other shrines as well. So we'll have to do a second shield clip to get in. Oh, wow. And, that, um, was so, it, that was so fast. <laughs> it, 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 it was still pretty fast, but it doesn't um, it doesn't look slow, like you just said. But it's still faster to only clip once, which is why if you can get the clip through the door first try in Cryonis, it is faster, but doesn't always happen. For sure. Um, with the durability thing, yeah, I'm, I'm curious. There's something in chat. Um, can you do that with any weapon or shield or anything? Uh, any shield. Um, there is other ways that I'm going to be talking about later to manipulate and multiply durability for any equipment in the game. Oh. Um, you can make you can make extremely high durability weapons that otherwise uh, would be low durability. And a, a trick that we'll be, we'll be working towards later. But um, for now, this, this what I just did, uh, the little shield jump, unequip, re-equip thing, uh, that only works for shields. Okay. So we just unlocked the bombs rune, and I said before in the past, stasis was our number one rune for movement. Bombs is now by far, and not only because of what I'm going to do here, the best rune for movement in this game. Um, since we are in a shrine, um, we're going to be using a, the wind bomb technique here, which we can mm -hmm. only do by using bombs. And I will slow down for this. Um, you can shut off more than once as well. I mean, I know we'll see it later on. Is Exactly. We'll see tons of them. Uh, that's going to be our main movement in the overworld. Right. But what we will essentially be doing is we're going to be lining up two bombs in the air by again using bullet time. So I'm going to be jumping. And this is the, the first mechanic that comes to play. When Link jumps and you press a bomb mid-air, he doesn't pick it up. He just lets it drop like this. So it kind of just drops. This only happens when you're mid-air. And we'll be using that for this wind bomb. So if we jump, drop a bomb, and then go into bullet time, this is what this looks like. We can see Link jumps, he lets the bomb fall, and we are in bullet time, so we're moving slowly now. That's step one. And then for step two, we're gonna be placing the second bomb after a little bit of time, a little bit of time has passed. So we're placing the first bomb, and then we're placing the second bomb. And you can maybe already kind of see where this is going. So the bombs are lined up now. Um, behind Link. Uh, at, the, at the beginning, it's the round bomb. Between Link and the bomb is the square bomb. So if we blow up the round bomb, 
it's gonna blow up and blast the square bomb into Link. And you can right. already see how he was like basically falling over there. That made sense so far. But if we do it um, in the right direction, and that's what I'm gonna be doing here, we can use this to basically jump. In this case, to like jump over this wall. Uh, so the first bomb blew up, <laughs> uh, hit the second bomb into Link, and we were able to skip the shrine this way. Right now, that doesn't actually look too overpowered, but later on we will be able to use the paraglider out of these wind bombs to carry right. all of the momentum from that explosion into the glider, and we will be gliding at the speed of that, of that jump. So mm. we can get a ton of speed. It was so fast. Yeah, and um, the great thing about those is also, even though there's bombs exploding, this always only does one heart of damage, because the damage that we take from this trick is not the damage from the explosion, it's the damage from the bomb hitting Link, which is just, just it's just hard-coded. Oh. Uh, if Link gets hit by an item, it's one heart every time. Right. Yeah, because if, if, if a bomb explodes you, especially this early on, it'll, you'll, you will absolutely get KO'd. You will, yeah, I, I, I would have died there. It's, it's yeah. not exactly three... It's, it is actually three hearts of damage exactly, but um, in normal mode, Link has something called one-shot protection. So if you get hit by a bomb now with full health, you actually survive. But um, later, if I, had, if I have like four HP and I only have three hearts, it would deal three uh, damage. But one-shot protection helps yep. you to not always get one-shot. It obviously feels frustrating if you do get one-shot. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I've done that by accident. <laughs> so I'm going to go for this, and either it's going to look cool, or it will be able to show why wind bombs are not that good um, if you don't have the paraglider yet. And uh, I don't even know what happened there. Um, well, I actually kind of do what happened. I kind of know what happened. Um oh, and I will talk about this more once we have the paraglider. But let me try it one more time. Okay. You're just lining up your shot, right? And then you go. Okay, we actually got it here. Um, so here we survived, but you can see um, the only reason I survived is because my angle was like pretty low to the ground. I if I had I done was... the setup for this wrong, um, I would have wouldn't have been able to do that fall damage cancel I did earlier because Link is in the ragdoll state. He's like rolling all over the place. Right. And you can't throw your weapon. So you can't do the glitch I did earlier to prevent fall damage. So I would have just died if I was too high. Yeah. Uh, so wind bombs are actually really risky if you are not using, um, the, if you don't have the paraglider yet. We are about to get that though. Mm -hmm. Because we have now completed all four shrines and um, we can meet up with the mysterious old man on top of the Temple of Time. It's this is a fan mysterious. favorite. Very mysterious. This is a fan favorite, which often fails. You want to see if I can get it? Oh, yeah. The good old tree launch up here. Uh, so, again, using stasis for this one to basically mm -hmm. charge up the tree and then just holding onto the tree and taking the right up the temple. And then that's a great plateau. We'll get the paraglider. Yeah, I also think of the terminal montage video. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, um, well, I guess this is actually still used in the any percent record now. Mm -hmm. But um, th this thread technically is probably not going to be in the runs anymore because of the new route, if it if it becomes uh, reality. Because we will be using a different glitch pretty much throughout the entire plateau, and I'm going to explain this after Wait. I get the tower. And you may ask, why are you getting the tower? Uh, why did you even go through the struggle of doing all of these wall clips and everything if you're getting the tower now? And this is because if you get the tower after the Great Plateau, after you meet the king here, what a surprise, it was the king after all. Um, after getting the king, uh, meeting the king here, um, when you are done with getting the tower, he doesn't show up there anymore. So you save like a minute because usually there's a cutscene around the tower. Uh, but now that we are done with the Great Plateau, we can save that minute. Here's the wind bomb again, but this time we have the paraglider. So now we can use the momentum from it and it transfers into the paraglider. So now we can glide really quickly to the tower. Yeah, so I feel and like it's easier to get up there from where you exactly. are now as well. So this is going to be our main movement for a short distance. And we consider this a short distance, surprisingly, travel. <laughs> what we'll be using for long distance travel is what I'm going to go over 
and I really explain it because there's not that many YouTube tutorials for this out yet, and maybe somebody can learn something. I get asked for this trick a lot still because it's still very new. It got found. Uh, it was found in early September of this year by uh, Legend of Link, who is an absolute legend and found like so many glitches for this game. It's incredible. Um, another big one we'll talk about later. But we have now uh, activated the tower. I'm obviously skipping the cutscenes here. Um, still in the spirit of speedrunning. We've activated the tower, and again, usually, if we jump down from here, the old man would show up and tell us uh, to beat a shrine, but right. we've already beaten all four shrines, so yeah. the quest is finished and he's not going to show up anymore. Perfect. Um, and, uh -huh, big reveal of the map. This is probably going to be the only map I'm going to be getting in this run, uh, because getting this tower actually activates every every shrine in the game. So um, if I had not gotten this tower, every shrine in the overworld would have been in the same state than the ones on the plateau where, oh, wow. where we can't activate the terminal. And while we could have clipped, not activating the terminal means you can't warp back there. Activating the terminal is what unlocks the shrine as a warp point, not beating the shrine. To show this off, if I wanted to warp to Magnesis now, I'm pressing A right now, I can't. Because I've never activated the terminal, I've only beaten the shrine. So oh. getting the tower is going to unlock uh, all of the warping that we want to do in the run. And uh, yeah, it's literally faster to go through this cutscene and clipping into the shrines because it unlocks warping. Yes. I mean um, but yeah, before I talk about this big glitch, which is uh, going to be our main movement from now on for big uh, long distance traveling, let me actually uh, let me actually explain how this works. So, this is called the bow lift smuggle slide, or BLSS for short, or I'm mostly just going to call them slides. Um, okay. And again, this was found in September, and you've already seen so much. You've seen the wind bombs, the BTBs. So you would wonder how on earth would you possibly find something where you can move even more efficiently, and that's what I'll show. So this all starts <laughs> by uh, doing a glitch called bow sliding. Bow sliding is done super easily. You hold out your bow like this, so you don't aim with it, so you don't hold the bow button, you tap it. So Link basically holds the bow in his hand like this. If we now press B and then instantly after press plus, so Link basically still has the bow in his hand, and then unequip our shield, or remove it, I think it both uh, like unequip like this, we are now uh, bow locked. Bow locked means, and you can look specifically at Link's arrow, when I press B here, the arrow disappears, but the bow doesn't. So I'm locked. Link is locked. The bow, he can't unequip the bow. He's, he's forced to hold the bow. This is called um, bow lock. Um, and by, by now jumping and holding the B button, I'm going to be jumping forward and then only hold the B button and forward. I'm going to be moving like this. Looks a bit unnatural. Right. Uh, Link is basically walking right now, but because he's bow locked and his his like state is locked it looks unnatural it looks like he's sliding around yeah. <laughs> uh, over the ground this um, this, it, it looks very satisfying honestly uh, because yeah. you can like go up slopes and the cool thing is this even scales with movement speed because in the background link is walking here but it just doesn't play the same animation so this is the base of the next glitch and obviously doesn't look very broken yet <laughs> but we're going to be warping back to the great plateau tower to get some extra height and show what makes this state broken so excited. Yeah, this, this is so funny. If you've never seen this movement, yeah, you're going to have a good time. <laughs> yeah, so basically, we're going to be getting into the same state where we are sliding, but additionally, we're going to be holding an item. And the item that we will be holding, and you can do this with other items too, but we will be holding the bomb, which allows us to do this next glitch anywhere. And this is again why the bomb has slowly but surely become the most like overpowered uh, tool for speedrunning movement. Mm -hmm. So this is going to get a little bit deeper now. You can use the round bomb for this or the square bomb. The round bomb accelerates faster and stays speedy in the air more consistently. The only downside is when you set up the glitch, the round bomb obviously rolls, which can actually be really annoying sometimes when there's a big slope. But here on the flat surface, we can use it. So after placing down the bomb, we need to hold out our shield and then tap the bow and then the A button. Now Link is holding the bow, like earlier for the, basically the bow lock, and the bomb at the same time. The next step is the only hard step about the glitch. You have to jump, press B, and then plus immediately after. 
like this. You can see Link is about to put the bomb away, but he hasn't fully done it yet. Mm -hmm. If we now unequip the shield and press B again, Link is holding the bomb and the uh, bow again. Mm -hmm. And if we now aim, you can basically see the, the bomb is like stuck on Link's hand, right? So we're right. smuggling the bomb right now. Now we are set up. We are bow locked and we are holding the bomb. So we are going to be in the state that we were in earlier where Link slides on the ground. But additionally, we are holding a bomb and this causes this to happen. So now we are basically sliding, but additionally, this bomb that Link is holding is pushing us. And by flicking my control stick from left to right very fast, I'm able to build up insane speed mid-air without even using the paraglider. So this might already be able to tell you how broken this is because we're not using stamina right now. And this is why this is so broken. Uh, we obviously start the game with one ring of stamina. Uh, which means every time we do like a wind bomb or a bullet time bounce and use the paraglider, we are restricted by the use of stamina. But right. that's not the case with this glitch. We have basically now made it from the Great Plateau to Kakariko in 20, 30 seconds without ever using stamina. And this is why this is extremely powerful for long distance movements and speedruns because we usually don't have the time to get a stamina upgrade. Right. Uh, if we had any upgrades, and this is actually funny, because when you play this game casually, people will tell you, oh, hearts are overrated, it's kind of whatever, if you get like one shot, you get one shot anyway, get stamina, but it's completely the opposite in speedrunning, because having an extra heart means being able to do an extra wind bomb, uh, or being able to save, getting, save time having to get food or being right. able to save time cooking food. So getting hearts is the actual time save in speedrunning. And I'm going to be getting one here in Kakariko. Okay, great. And it's going to um, be, yes, yeah. So so it seems like uh, with this, it's ELSS, it seems like yep. you cannot build height with it necessarily. You, yes, and that's the biggest downside. If we <laughs> had one day figure out how to also get height with this, we have the ultimate glitch. Yes. But that's the only restriction right now that we can't build height. So we have to start high if we want to, uh, go very far. Right. Do you it. slowly lose height or are you just staying no, at the same? It's, it's, it's exactly consistent. Yeah. Okay. You're not losing or gaining any height. Huh. There's some niche ways to uh, get some extra height. You can like slide up a slope yeah, and keep the slide happen. going, but um, it, it can also end. It's not great. Like height is the only issue with this. Okay. So it's not always a good idea to try to go up a slope with it. Yeah. Like uh, again, um, you can, but it's like. You, you don't want to. It, it's usually like a backup strategy. It's, it's safer to start the slide from a higher or origin point uh, right. than, than pokering if the slope is actually going to let you slide along because sometimes Link will instead just stop. Okay. Okay. I haven't explained this yet, even though it's an absolute staple of speedrunning, and I almost consider this a casual strat, but. Oh, I didn't even whistle, think about it either. <laughs> if you whistle and then spam the B button, you can keep up sprinting speed while regaining stamina. So um, I have to claw grip for this because I have to hold down the D-pad while moving the control stick up. So I use my uh, like index finger for the, the stick and then I mash B. And sprinting normally is still slightly faster. So in speedruns, we go from whistle sprinting to get our stamina back to normal sprinting and when the stamina is depleted again we go back to whistle sprinting back and forth right. in uh, modern speedruns there's not that much running left but you will still occasionally do it mm -hmm. so we're going to impa here this is because i want to get the camera um and you don't get the camera from impa but if you don't go to impa to get the quest to get the camera you cannot get the camera Oh, interesting. So we have to meet Impa. It, this game is very open, but there's still some amount of sequencing you have to do. So For example, you have to come to Impa uh, if you want to unlock memories or uh, get the camera rune. It has been gotcha. Yeah, I guess I never considered that because it's not something that I... You, I, I usually do it in, in order, pretty much. <laughs> exactly. Okay. So if you actually were to just go to Hateno now and try to get the camera. Um, in order to get the camera, you have to light uh, this little blue fire at the right. tech lab. And the blue fire source is there, but the little um, 
flame that you have to light at the campfire is just not there. So you can't even light it. So there's no actual you... fire to be like used. Not a fire is there, but the, the fireplace that you have to light up, up at the tech lab is just not there. So you, oh, can't, okay. you can't progress the quest. Okay. Unless you come here and you also have to talk to Impa again uh, to have her explain to you what happened 100 years ago. Yeah. And that's when she gives you the quest for the Divine Beasts and she gives you the quest for the camera. Okay. And then, so how does the camera, how is that going to help us? It's um, going to help us for two glitches. Um, one is going to be another one that I can, I think everybody can try out at home, even if you don't speedrun this game. It's one of the coolest glitches, in my opinion, okay. uh, to do. And not because it looks super flashy, but because you'll be able to play the game in a way that you usually can't. I, I won't give away too much yet. Are you telling me to go get my Switch while we're, you're, you're doing this? If you want to, I, th I think it's doable. <laughs> but um, for now, I'm going to try to go for something which... In the past, I've e either gotten first try or has taken me way too long. We see what happens today. Um, okay. And I'm actually not really going to explain anything about it first. And I I'll try to just get it and let it uh, let it just show. Okay. So you did the wind bomb to get up there, and that and that yeah. was just to um, have fast travel. To activate the shrine, yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so it didn't work here yet. I always get two tries. Oh, that did not work. I did not intentionally sacrifice this chicken. I just cuckoo. Maybe I get one more try. There we go. So okay. by timing our bullet time input, uh, we are still in the in the state of flying with a cuckoo. But the cuckoo has left us. So we are basically just, yeah, I don't know, floating. That's so cool. So in order to do this, you basically have to just time the bullet time activation. And you can already tell, bullet time is pretty broken in this game. Uh, at the peak of your jump with the cuckoo. It looks kind of cool. It's like kind of link in space. That was awesome. Okay, so it's just um, going into bullet time with the right timing with it? Exactly. You just jump with the cuckoo off a like cliff or like any anything you can get bullet time off of because you can only go into this bullet time mode with the bow when you are mid air, yeah, or yeah, at least yeah. your feet are higher enough away from the ground. Like I can't just do it while standing, or even for like small jumps like this or whatever. Uh, it's just a small height difference. I wouldn't be able, or just off of a jump, you can't do it. You have to actually jump quite high. <laughs> like this to actually get in the bullet time. So right. if you can do that with the cuckoo and you time your, uh, the bullet time at the peak of the jump, uh, Link lets go of the cuckoo, but he stays in the floating state. It looks funny. Right, I like that. That's great. So we'll stop quickly at this fairy fountain. Not for a glitch, but if you want to move around quickly, we're going to be, like I already explained, uh, wasting some hearts. And mm -hmm. one of the most efficient early game foods, even though it's not food, is actually going to be fairies. Because they will just heal us to full uh, if we were... Uh, like, otherwise, uh, if we otherwise would die, a fairy will just... Um, what, are you, what is yeah, that move that you're doing? Oh, I'm just, I'm crouching and I'm just pressing X, which is like a little hop. Uh, this way I'm still stealthy, but I'm still moving faster. So by jumping while crouched, you do these little crouch hops. Oh, I never do that. Oh, that's really cool. Um, Okay, okay. I had another question and now I forgot. Mm -hmm. So go ahead. <laughs> Oh, you, f you don't have a question on? I did, but I have forgotten it already. Oh, okay, it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> um, we will be landing up here. And maybe you can already t tell why, because we talked about this. If we want to slide, we want to start right. from a high point. Correct. Right. And we're going to be sliding again. This time I'm going to use the square bomb, just because the round bomb might get annoying here. It might roll away. And okay. again, the only downside with the square bomb is that... Um, it doesn't accelerate just as fast, but it still works. Mm -hmm. um, the steering with this trick can be a little bit annoying because if you ever hit the neutral zone of the stick when you do this, um, then you actually fall down. So you have to constantly be flicking uh, from left to right. So if uh, your left stick ever hits neutral, Link will just fall down. 
Like if you let go of it, basically. If you let go of it, exactly, yeah. Or, or, or even if you unintentionally hover in the middle of the, the stick too much, so you basically constantly have to move. And it will definitely destroy some sticks over time. Oh, okay. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. But uh, over time, in this time, while we, were, we talked, we already made it from uh, Kakariko to Ateno. <laughs> which again shows why this is a pretty good trick. I love that. Oh, so somebody in chat asked, what is happening? Yeah, it's the DLSS, which, uh, can you tell me what that means again? Uh, it's um, the bow lift smuggle slide. Because, bow lift um, smuggle slide, but he's called Bow lift smuggle slide. is the first glitch uh, that I talked about, where you slide on the ground and yes. um, you use um, the bomb additionally to slide. I can actually, because... Um, I'll do that later. I've done it with the bomb so far, but it also works with other items like these little pots that we saw on the ground, right. or even small rocks. It's like any item you can hold can give you speed to slide around. Awesome. Okay. So I just grabbed the mob. Um, and that's because I need an item that I can light up. Because <laughs> I already said we are going to be getting the camera, and in order to get the camera, we need to light up the fire. But... Um, Casually, this is a little annoying because obviously the fire is here and the tech lab is all the way over there. And if you are um, using a torch or if you're, if you're holding a torch, you move very slowly. Right. But uh, we, we are already uh, smuggling bows around, um, basically <laughs> like holding bows even though we shouldn't. We'll do the same thing now with a weapon. So if we place a bomb on the ground and then hold out... A weapon in front of the bomb if we pick up the bomb and instantly pause the game afterwards and then again seems to be a reoccurring thing unequip our shield hmm. link picks up the bomb but he's also still holding the mob looks a little strange already yes but if we're about to throw the bomb it looks even stranger the mob kind of leaves our body and now <laughs> it's stuck to our hands so the way we're already walking looks strange Oh, wow. But uh, what this allows us to do is we can light the mob on fire just by, like, walking around. And then we can do other things while still holding the mob. So one way this is really useful is by doing a wind bomb. Right. So we can wind bomb with the mob in hand. Uh, it's just kind of stuck to us. So this is uh, a lot more efficient, a lot more <laughs> efficient way to bring the fire up to this tech lab instead of slowly walking up there. Right. You can use that, uh, do that a few times. Yep, we do another one here and then we're there. Instead of like lighting up all of the torches. <laughs> and and this is, uh, this thing would not be here had we not talked to Impa. Yeah, it would just not okay. be there. And okay. now it is, so we can activate this as a war point and we can actually get the camera. Perfect. That's amazing. <laughs> so, um, how. Uh, I'm trying to think of the, like, basically attaching the mop to your hand. Is that... Mm -hmm. uh, my question surrounding that is, like, with the pot lid, with all of these things, uh, with shields, like, do you know what's going on in the game to... Caught, like, why removing... I, I think it's just basically interrupting an action. So usually the game would... Uh... The, usually the game would automatically remove the weapon where if you okay. pick up the bomb but by unequipping the shield that action just gets like stopped so the, the he he doesn't actually let go of the weapon that's why it's like stuck in his hands again automatically okay. like if you pick up a, it, it doesn't have to be the potlet it just has to be a shield in this case right um that you unequip that action unequips the uh, stops the other action from happening which is if you pick up a bomb, okay. usually Link unequips his weapon, but by inputting that shield unequip, that action gets interrupted and the right. weapon gets stuck on his hands. And we can still use it as like a fire um, carrier, essentially. Right, right. I remembered my other question. It's not, I wouldn't say it's necessarily run related, but what is, is um, talking to Impa the trigger for the DLC items? Cause I saw them all pop up after that. And I just don't remember. Um, it is not for the DLC items. The DLC items, I mean, actually, maybe it is. Another thing that you can do is just reload the game. Um, it's just that the DLC quests show up 
but they already exist anyway. Right. What Impa is a trigger of that a lot of people don't know is the dragons. If you don't talk to Impa, Nadra will not be there and no other dragon will ever spawn. Oh. So if you never talk to Impa, the dragons never show up and this is also important for some speedruns, which is why we go to Impa just so the dragons spawn. Interesting. Okay, gotcha. Um, but so yeah, I will come... all the way up the mountain and there's just nothing there. Yep. There will okay. just be nothing there. And um, if you try to meet some uh, some of the other dragons, they um, they will never spawn. Like Farosh, who's the guy that flies around Lake Hylia all the time, will just not be there. And um, yeah, the DLC quests, they, uh, they either happen after the first reload or first death, and maybe also after getting the Divine Beast quest from Impa. But the, the chests are in the game the entire time. There's no specific flag for those. Okay. I won't be doing too much DLC content. I will show one specific thing about it later when we get to Master Koga. Oh, fun. But, okay. Um, yeah, the DLC is usually locked behind uh, a lot of game completion. Um, the big DLC content, the story content, only unlocks after beating all the Vine Beasts, and right. that would be a bit too much for today. Right. So, do I even have any money here? No. Okay, so I will have to come back here later. Okay. <laughs> I'm still planning to get some money eventually, but so far we didn't need it. Right, we just didn't even, just wasn't even on the, on the... But what I yeah. will get is, uh, quickly, this shrine. Uh, that will be uh, needed for later. Right. But yeah, for now, we're gonna go back to the Great Plateau, because now that we have uh, the camera, and that we have uh, progressed the game a little bit, we will make our way to Gerudo Town, so we'll dive into some of the main story quests a little bit, at least, because there's some cool skips and some cool tricks related to that part awesome. uh, in that area, which is going to be the Gerudo main quest. So obviously there's basically like four big main quests, like the four Divine Beasts. We right. won't even do any Divine Beasts, but we will start the Divine Beast quest in Gerudo up to the point of... Uh, be, uh, fighting Master Koga because there's right. some cool stuff about uh, the Yiga hideout. Yeah, but the first we have to get there. I was gonna ask about the Divine Beast and Ganon. I assume we're just it, that's not the point of today. <laughs> we will we will do Ganon um, okay. at the very end because there's another cool thing we can do in the Dark Beast fight, uh, <laughs> which I've actually recently done for the first time. It breaks the game in very funny ways. Um, oh, good, good. Okay. So we will we will get there, but uh, you can get there without beating the Divine Beast. This just means that we'll have to beat all of the Blights once we get there. So we still, yeah. while we are casually flying around, we still have to get a little stronger. Um, a lot of that uh, will happen, though, when I do go to Hyrule Castle later, because Hyrule Castle just has such good equipment. Right. And then I already talked about the fact that there's a way now where you can basically build your own strong weapon and even duplicate weapons. Right. I will show that off, too. And that will mm -hmm. be what I'll use to actually beat the boss fights later. Awesome. So with with BLSS, or I guess you you said you like top fighting. Um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> how? I mean, it seems like it, maybe it's just you're at a point where you practice enough with it. But how hard is it to get consistent with that? I think just getting into the state where you're sliding. Um, and maybe when I do it again later, we can talk just through it step by step again with the inputs. So maybe some people can follow along. Just yeah, sliding sure. slowly in any direction is pretty easy. The only hard part about that is the timing with that one input. Right. And I talked about where you have to uh, jump and then uh, press B and plus almost at the same time. That's the only hard part. But what is actually hard is building speed fast and consistently and not falling down and also steering them correctly. This took me... And I wouldn't even consider myself great at them because uh, the categories that I've run haven't really focused on like very precise slides. Uh, also, okay. I just picked up a diamond. That was not a glitch. There's always a diamond under this rock. Uh, oh. Literally, after every blood moon, it respawns. It's pretty useful. Um, oh. And then additionally, there should be a chest here on the we right. We will never get it once in this version because... There will never be a blood moon. True, it will never respawn. That's a good point. There will never be a blood moon because I never started the time. The only way there can be a blood moon is by something called a panic blood moon. It's not a real blood moon. The game will just play the blood moon animation if it's like storage gets overloaded. Right. It's very rare and it's probably not going to happen today. But okay. this diamond Even will not be like back. Loading large chunks of the map in such a short amount of time, it can. it's just like, oh, we can handle it. Or... 
Yeah, but that is also the reason it can happen. Like, usually it's fine, but the only reason it happens, it doesn't usually happen casually. But if you move around this much, and it's actually more likely to happen if you do a lot of walking. Because by flying around, some chunks just never even load in the first place because we just skip mm. them. Uh, okay. But if you walk around everywhere, it is actually more likely to happen. Gotcha. And I feel like um, the more likely to occur, the more enemies that you destroy, right? That I mean, is another, exactly. Because that's all like things that the game is to remember, like opening chests, etc. Right. Um, but uh, we will probably not see a blood moon today. Right. So I got uh, a chest there with a forest dweller bow. This is a tr three shot bow. And that's important for later when we want to get our equipment that mm -hmm. I talked about. Uh, we will need specifically uh, triple shot bows or double shot bows in order to do this. We are not there yet, but I'm already explaining why I got that chest. The other reason I'm coming here is because not only am I slowly moving closer to Gerudo Town, but I'm also hitting up Mount Satori, the most broken spot in the game to get equipment and gear. And in this case, food. Exactly. Durians, extremely powerful. Not only do they give three hearts from base, but when you cook them, they completely refill your hearts and give you extra hearts. 12 or 14 or something ridiculous. Exactly. <laughs> and only, uh, one durian alone gives you four yellow hearts. So we will right. be able to get like 40, 50 hearts from those durians. So a lot of wind bombs. Right. I'm also Amazing. stopping by to get some Endura carrots. That will be important for something else later. Um, those, when cooked, will not only give you a little bit of extra stamina in form of like a little yellow ring, but they will also refill your base stamina. So right. if I'm like mid-air and I can't get my stamina back, eating that dish will completely refill it. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm also getting the shrine quickly as, again, a war point. I have a quick question. Um, mm -hmm. So there's there's still like wind bombs, obviously, and I know BLSS right. is newer, but like what, what causes you to want to use one over the other in this run? Since so, um, good, good question. In those movements that I just did, right, like chest to Durian. Oh, see, Farosh is there now. He wouldn't be here if we didn't talk to Impa. Um, oh, yeah. Hi. So he can spawn at any time, which is also interesting. We never start the time of day, but he can. We just have to talk to Impa. Um, if we have to go far, like here, I'm gonna be almost gonna go all the way to. I'm gonna almost go all the way to uh, Gerudo Town here, and uh, not Gerudo Town, but at least Gerudo Canyon over there. Uh, we okay. want to be LSS because it's super far. Uh, we, it would c cost us too much stamina to make it there. Or we would have to do like four or five wind bombs, so a lot of health, right? But if you want to go a medium distance, and specifically if you also need height, like I did earlier, we talked about this, right? Then the wind bomb still prevails. Okay. And also inside shrines, um, because usually inside shrines you always need height, is still wind bombs are still better. Okay. But uh, long distance travel like this, you just slide now. Okay. And somebody was also asking if, um, like, are there no notable glitches that you do inside Divine Beast right now, or they're just not really something that are worth mentioning? Inside what? The, the Divine Beast? Yeah, the, the funny thing is, um, Divine Beasts are almost glitchless. Um, they okay. are cool in the speedrun, but they are the only glitch that I can think of right now is a, another one of those shield clips in Naboris. The okay. rest is just abusing the fact that the developers allow us to use Revali scale. So yes! usually in every Divine Beast, you, in every Divine Beast run, you do Varmedo first, the Divine Beast in Rito Village, you get Revali scale, and you can oh. just use it, or Wind Bombs both actually, kind of, to just skip it. So you just use movement to go from one terminal to another quickly, not really glitches. There's yeah. basically no glitch, honestly. Like, there's a wall clip, there's one, like, specific arrow shot in Rudania, but it's yeah. basically just movement. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, I use them. Um, I definitely do Vomito first now anytime I play this because of that. So, we um, made it into the Gerudo Canyon. I'm gonna get some fire arrows from this chest. And then um, a very powerful shield from another chest, a little bit lower. My portal is almost breaking, but... That is no longer going to be a problem. I am losing health here, but I obviously have those Dorians. Right. This chest contains the Radiant Shield. And the Radiant Shield, uh, we will actually get two of them, is the best shield in the game, in my opinion. Okay. Uh, especially for speedrunning, because the Radiant Shield is the slickest shield 
in the game. And not because it looks cool, but because there is actually a friction stat in the game for shields. So <laughs> some shields um, are more slick than others. I can actually explain what happened in this wind bomb later, because I, I will go over this. This is something called a dead angle. I talk about this in my wind bomb guide, which uh, I made what? a long time ago, which I'm very proud of because it's one of the like most watched. I hear that I taught this trick to a lot of people. It's pretty cool uh, going forward. But um, yeah, some angles with wind bombs just don't work because Link gets hit from a, a, like at a weird part of the bomb. I explain it later uh, and showing it off. Mm -hmm. But uh, so there's friction in the game. Uh, some shields are more slick than others. That's what I said. And the radiant shield is the most slick. And what all this means is it's better for shield surfing. So a potlet is really bad. It is almost one of the worst. It has almost one of the um, worst friction stats in the game. So when I shield surf with it on snow, it's actually okay because snow is a nice surface. But on any other surface, it's bad. So the radiant shield. It's super slick. Um, it can even shield surf on like stone or on on shrines, oh, wow. and this will be very useful for some other glitches later. So I might not even be able to show it off anymore because I think this pot is just gonna break here. Now oh, you can see, right? Basically not surfing at all, but with the radiant shield, even on the stone, I'm like pretty fast. Like it's oh, actually wow. like faster than running mm -hmm. uh, because it's so slick. And I'm gonna be using. I'm gonna use that for a glitch coming up. Okay. In uh, a bit. I did not realize that it had that kind of um, slickness rating. I mean, it makes sense. It absolutely makes sense. Exactly. Cool. So, um, what huh. I'm about to do, I don't think it's really a glitch, but we uh, intended to use this little, or actually big boulder up there out of metal to push these rocks away. <laughs> a sledgehammer will do the job just fine, though. It looks a little unnatural. But it still allows us to push this big boulder away and um, access this hidden stash. The stash is actually pretty powerful. Oh, uh, not only you. did we get another radiant shield, I just threw this beer away. It, it looks cool, but it's unfortunately pretty weak. We need our item spaces for better stuff. Okay, you don't want that There's bell. 300 rupees in here and uh, some bone barrels, which is nice. And the bow, the bow is not worth getting. No, the bow is not worth getting because we need our bow spaces for multi-shot bows uh, for okay. the glitch later. And um, there's going to be a bunch of them in the Jäger hideout. The preferred weapon of the Jäger soldiers is the duplex bow. Right. Which happens to be a multi-shot bow. This rock is usually a little annoying because it slightly moves. So uh, if you actually, I haven't even talked about this yet, but to get a slide like this going, you have to walk over some sort of ledge. You can't just oh. like walk off the ground. You have to, Link has to be an animation of getting up a ledge or like a little object. Like so, do a step up, basically. A step up, a step up. That's exactly right. Yeah, he has to okay. do a step up. Also, okay. I'm going to fall down here. Because if you ever pause during this glitch, no matter what you hold, you will fall down. Had I not paused here, I thought I would have died. I wouldn't actually have died because I forgot the fact that I have fairies in my inventory, but I wanted to be safe anyway. It's okay. Uh, we are almost at Gerudo Town. Oh. But uh, if you ever pause the game when you do this glitch, even with the quick menu, uh, you will immediately fall down. Um, I just saw that I was about to run out of hearts and uh, it was cold. I don't have cold protection gear right now. Uh, so I thought I was going to die, but I forgot the fact that I was actually careful and picked up some berries. Right, so it would have, it would have been fine technically. It would have been fine, but I uh, was already careful. So here you can see, because I failed this wind bomb again, how good this shield is. Like I'm yes. not really doing much, but I'm still moving so quickly through the desert. If I'm if I'm jumping here, even going uphill, I'm basically keeping my speed. So this is like much faster than running around the desert. Um, this is also because I just failed this wind bomb. A good time to explain why wind bombs fail. And um, if I do these wind bombs usually, and this is also the best way to do them, I use the round bomb first and the square bomb second. Um, this is because the hit, getting hit by the square bomb gives you more height and speed, which is obviously what you want in a speedrun. Okay. But the square bomb has a very interesting um, niche um, effect, which is when the square bomb spawns, when you let it drop by being in the air, the sides of the square bomb 
will always face cardinal directions. So you can see, and this is not random, how one of the sides is facing north, one of the sides is facing east, one of them is facing oh. south, and so on. No matter how I jump, the sides will always be facing north, west, south, east. No matter how I jump, the huh. square bomb will always spawn facing cardinal directions. And this is why some angles on wind bombs don't work. If I, for example, aim like this way, I, I, maybe it will work. Um, let's see. I, I would say probably not. Okay. See? I just failed. And this is because I didn't aim in a cardinal direction. You so when you do wind bombs, you either want to aim exactly cardinal or ordinal. The angles in between, and I'm looking at the map here. This is why I'm currently throwing my weapon. This allows me to kind of readjust where Link is looking on the map. Um, the safest thing to do is aim cardinal directions. Here, I'm aiming exactly east. This okay. way, I'm going to get hit by the flat side of this bomb. You can kind of see how this is lining up right now. Yes. That way, it works all the time. But if you um, aim a little bit off one of those angles, and we call in speedrunning, we call this dead angles, um, sometimes it will fail. And this is why if a wind bomb has failed so far, that's usually the reason. Interesting. Okay. It can still be timing, but this is a very common mistake. So I'm talking to Benja here. This is another instance of sequencing in the game. If you don't talk to Benja, the person at Karakara Bazaar doesn't spawn that sells you the outfit. If you don't get the outfit, you can't enter Gerudo uh, Town. If you can't enter Gerudo Town, you can't start the quest. Correct. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, no, this is why uh, I'm, I'm not talking that much. Um, I, just because I'm a host doesn't mean I have a lot to say, since this is um, the stage of all the people who know all the glitches. So in this instance, Lumpkeeba is doing a fantastic job, and I am just an avid listener to you all. But I'm still paying attention to chat in case there are any questions. <laughs> I think you're doing a good job at that, too. <laughs> I'm just hanging out, really. <laughs> mm. But um, I currently have not, have not enough money to buy uh, the outfit. It's going to be 600 rupees. And as soon as I make it here, there's also going to be a cutscene. This is basically the, the cutscene of the game, like um, introducing the Divine Beast. But sorry, mm. what was that? Uh, so you able to sell the diamond or do you want to keep it? Exactly. No, that's okay. what I will do. Okay. And I'm also going to buy exactly one shock arrow. Mm, okay. And that will be, again, important for the glitch later with um, duplicating items or weapons, specifically. <laughs> but um, there is actually a shop here. It's one of the most underwhelming shops in the game because they literally sell exactly one of each arrow. I guess nice. In our case, perfect because we only need one shock arrow, but oh. um, that's the most you'll oh, get here. Yeah. I just, I but never first, thought about shopping here, I guess. <laughs> yeah, true. It, it's definitely not a very popular shop. Um, but you have to, um, I have to first sell the diamond. Uh, now I have 800 rupees. Oh. I'll be able to afford that one shock arrow. I'll be able to afford the outfit. Mm -hmm. Before I get the outfit, though, I will cook some food. And I will cook those durians in singles. Oh, and then two carrots, yeah. This is the most efficient way because... This way, a durian, every durian can give us seven hearts by um, refilling three of our hearts because I will usually eat when I'm, when I'm on one HP. Yeah, they're so helpful. And if you cook like all five of them, you get at least 20. Yeah, otherwise every other additional durian would only add four yellow hearts because it wouldn't give us that extra, extra full refill thing. So you would say it's like faster to cook them in a big batch and then you have a ton of yellow hearts, but you would miss out on hearts overall. Mm -hmm. So uh, the most effective way is still the same. If you did four instead of five, would it still only be three per? Uh, if I did four, if I did four instead of five, it would give me sixteen yellow hearts, but only still one full recovery. But full recovery is the broken broken part. Oh, of the problem. I see what you mean. Like yeah, actually okay. refilling the red hearts. Like each right. of them is going to refill our red hearts. While if we cooked all of them, we would only get one red heart refill and then a bunch of yellow hearts. Right. But we still yeah. get the same amount of yellow hearts this way, but more full recovery normally. Like of right. the normal red hearts. Silly. I got there in the end. <laughs> it's honestly confusing. Like I also thought about I mean, it's actually also close because obviously while we get more hearts this way, we lose more time cooking the dishes. Right. Right. So it's still pretty close. There they are. We're gonna get uh, some. Uh, we're gonna get a nice outfit here. 
Definitely one of my favorites. <laughs> and this is actually funny. There's almost no... There's actually one way now to skip this outfit. Uh, but that's actually... The game works pretty well there. It will not let you into the city without this outfit, usually. Uh, there's like one small one way you can like break it for a little bit, but even then the game will catch up. Like yes, this game is broken, but some things work like surprisingly well. Um, and the Gerudo town being a good example of that. But um, again, the entire reason I came here is because I wanted to start the quest. So I'm going back now. Going back to the city. We could have technically warped to the shrine here, but it is actually faster to just wind bomb. Uh, warping is not slow, but it is slower than a wind bomb. I think a warp takes around 28 seconds or something. Right. So you if you wanna, wind bomb instead. I assume you want to save your shield durability and then also, um, yeah, doing the wind bomb gives you that boost of speed, which would be definitely fast and running. Exactly. Um, oh, actually, using the shield on the sand does not use durability. Oh, okay. Also so as well. it be sand and snow, right? Sand, snow, and the one thing that people usually don't know is paths. So actual paths in the game, if you surf on them, you don't you lose durability. Like the actual streets and paths where people like ride and walk do not uh, lose your shield durability. Uh, so I, I did one that? thing then, without even talking about it, which was I did a wind bomb in the air without ever landing. It's just another way of doing a wind bomb. Something that's really hard to explain. I covered personally in my wind bomb guides, but okay. it makes the trick even more versatile. Obviously, you never even have to land. You can just like wind bomb in the air. It's really good. Um, you, you theoretically, do that infinitely if you just have yes. health. And some runs use that to their advantage. Mm. Um, if as long as you have stamina and hearts, you can technically do it infinitely. Mm. That's cool. So that's really cool. we have made it to Reju. I love Riju. She's so cute. She's great. <laughs> and uh, I mean, in general, I, when I get asked, this is my favorite area of the game. Um, I think it has, like, yes, Zora's Domain has some, like, strong story, kind of the Mifa story and everything, but I just, I think Obosa is just an amazing character. I love Obosa. And uh, yeah. the music in general, this has the strongest music. Like, if you really think about it, like, this area has the Molduga soundtrack, which is one, a fan favorite. It has mm -hmm. the attack on Vana Boris, which is a huge bob. It, the Gerudo yeah. City Night is basically like Breath of the Wild lo-fi. Uh, the memory music, if you type in Obosa's Hand, oh. oh, if you don't get emotional when listening to Obosa's Hand, I think you haven't played the game. But um, it's just a great area. I'd say the which one is not song only the that, reason I came here, but yeah. The one song that, that really spurs my emotion, I mean, just in general, is just, I mean, uh, in Rito Village, just because you know it's got the. It's whole very path. comfy, very homey as well. Yeah. You do the whole like all the tasks side quests, and you have the kids, and they're all playing them. Oh, so true. That's cute. That's cute. When you're singing with him, oh, it's so cute. So besides that, yes, this whole area is like super strong with music, for sure. I agree. So I just uh, bought ten fire arrows, and um, okay. this is just the fastest way to get them. Um, right. Exactly. I have 15 now, um, which is nice, but I needed at least seven um, and I wasn't really able to get them yet. So I'll have to walk back to the shrine I went to earlier, uh, which seems a little bit inefficient now. And there was probably a slightly faster way to route this in. I didn't spend like days or like or to come up with this route, but this is what we're going to be doing now. We're going to be sliding back to the area where I got the radiant shield earlier. This happens to be the area where the Yiga hideout is. Right. And again, this is a this the, the entire reason we did this is basically the Yiga hideout. And one of the coolest skips that you can do casually once you learn shield clipping, and it's honestly huge, specifically if you were like me, and you didn't particularly enjoy the stealth mission in the Yiga hideout. I definitely didn't. Maybe some people did. Uh, stealth gameplay enjoyers. I'm not a big one. But uh, mm -hmm. that's what I really want to show. And um, again, I'm just going to quickly talk about the sequencing of it all. I, I, you could see there, I was walking against that little step, right? And oh, that's what allowed me to start the slide. I couldn't just walk off the shrine or anything. Right, I walked right. intentionally against that step, so Link would step up starting the slide. Right. Okay. Yeah, I'm not... I I enjoy puzzles, but sometimes stealth, I'm just like, it's too slow. Right. And I think the Yiga Hero in particular was a bit annoying in that regard. Like, it depends on how the stealth is designed, but uh, <laughs> for the Yiga Hideout... Um, 
it's, I don't know, I think it's a bit frustrating because the Yigas walk like very slow and the only yeah. mechanics, I mean, there's actually, once you get to know the game better, there's cool mechanics that you can use there, but I think the average casual player just doesn't get to know those. Mm -hmm. I think overall it's not one of the strongest parts of the game, but it's fine. Uh, we will be skipping it and I will show how. <laughs> but at yeah, well. first, I'm going to, um, I'm going to go for um a big glitch but in order to do that glitch i have to get another shrine and i couldn't get the shrine earlier because i didn't have enough fire arrows i'm, I'm trying to still catch up with the sequencing of it all so we made it to gerudo city to start the quest had we not started the quest we wouldn't be able to activate the master koga fight by any means he would just never spawn because the right. trigger for the flag is not set you have to actually start the quest one thing i will do to spare everyone's sanity is i will even though this will lose time turn off the shrine sensor because otherwise it will constantly bleep in our ears. Um, because it will always play when there's a shrine nearby. And this is a shrine. Right now it's just a big ice cube. And uh, seven fires, like I said, seven, the magic number, unfreezes the shrine and it allows us to enter. And an additional thing I want to do here is I want to break these rocks. They should contain luminous stones. They are worth 80 per stone. Right. Ouch. Which is um, actually kind of a lot of money. Specifically because we have to wait anyway to, um, for the ice to melt. Being able to generate this amount of money because we need a little bit more on the run mm -hmm. is nice. I unlocked the shrine now and, and this is the Katakar shrine. And I wasn't sure how much I was going to explain about the trick because it is very complicated. Okay. I'll keep it a little bit shorter um but what i'm gonna do here is the scw and okay, what does that mean? exactly it means shrine coordinate warp and this was the holy grail specifically for all shrine speedrunning where you have to actually beat all of the shrines again okay. some shrines are under the ground and you cannot enter them i will actually do this glitch while explaining because it might take me a couple of times sure uh first of all i'm actually gonna Switch the shield order because that will mess me up. Um, okay, see, I failed it here, so I have some more time to explain. Um, so a shrine cordon warp allows us to enter those shrines that are still under the ground. Um, and sometimes in order to get these shrines underground, uh, an easy example, and many people know this one, is the one around Kakariko. If you go around Kakariko, you see this pedestal, but there's no orb nearby. The orb is actually right. an impasse house. And in order to get the orb, you have to do tons of quests. Mm -hmm. So it's hidden behind like a lot of quests. So naturally, it would be great if you could enter the shrine, even though it's not there. This is what this glitch does. And I actually okay. got it here. What I did is I jumped and then basically did this fall damage cancel mechanic oh. I did earlier when I landed. This tricked the game into thinking I'm still grounded, kind of allowing me to go for a double jump. So I quickly activated the elevator, but then jumped away from it. So the game tried to make me enter the shrine back there, but it couldn't because I jumped away. So okay. in the game's memory, in the back of its mind right now, it thinks you're trying to enter a shrine. It thinks I'm trying to enter a shrine, and it thinks I'm trying to enter the shrine that I just unlocked, the Ka Taka shrine, the one encased in ice. The game still remembers this, but the game also remembers where I am now. Right now, I'm at the Yiga hideout. Um, okay. So is right it here, where I'm standing, there's a shrine, but it's still under the ground. This shrine usually unlocks way later into the game it actually unlocks when you get here the second time you steal an orb from the yiga hideout and throw it into this hole unlocking a dlc shrine oh right? yeah but uh, what i'm going to do here is i'm going to bring a text box up an easy way to bring a text box up is by activating the amiibo rune for the first time the game is going to be like hey i'm the amiibo rune you can use me I'm not going to use it, but uh, it brings up a text box. And this will make the game remember that I have actually tried to enter a shrine. But this time, I'm standing on the ground, so I can enter. But the only thing that the game does to decide what shrine Link is entering is it says, hey, I want to enter a shrine, but where am I? So it will ask the, will ask the game, where am I? But I'm here. <laughs> so instead of entering the shrine that I initially entered, it will enter the shrine that's under the ground. Because you're closer to it now. Exactly. <laughs> I'm opening the text box, I'm pressing B, and the game kind of freaks out. 
loads the shrine. And Kataka, we saw we've seen it earlier as the shrine where you have to bring an ice block all the way up to the monk, kind of dodging some flames along the way. But the shrine I'm entering now is this one. Key Hero Mo, the DLC shrine. Yes. And usually the shrine would not be enterable because it's literally underground. But the mechanics that I basically just explained are the reason that this is possible. And you could technically, I could technically skip the shrine and finish uh, the DL the, the, begin the DLC now. Not quite. Uh, there's a lot more to this. Um, in order to really access all of the DLC content early, you have to do this glitch four times on the Great Plateau, entering each of the DLC shrines on the Great Plateau early to truly begin the DLC, if you right. actually wanted to do like the final trial at the end. Mm -hmm. But this uh, is basically how the trick works, and I at least wanted to show um, how you can enter shrines that are underground. I'm going to leave the shrine now, it's also going to look quite interesting, because okay. finishing it will not really do anything for us. Do you use this trick? So what does this trick use mostly in, like, maybe on the... All buses? shrines. Um, all shrines? The, because in all shrines, all you care about... So I basically just left nothing, right? I literally just walked out of the... Out of yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Because the shrine isn't here. But the most uh, important use for this is all shrines. Because there are some shrines that are... Like I just said, big example, the one in, in Kakariko. So you do this glitch. You do it from this shrine. The one that I activated earlier, the small one that's like on the hill on Kakariko, next to Kakariko. Mm -hmm. And then you do it here, walk a little bit up here, and you enter the one that's still under the ground with the pedestal. Right. So we skip like all quests we have to do to usually enter. Saves like seven minutes. Right, because you have to like do the stealth thing, like you have to follow that guy. And... Now the biggest time save of this, and this is the most ridiculous one, is... Um, the sand seal race. So next to Gerudo Town, there is a sand seal race. You have to beat a specific time to uh, win the prize and enter the shrine. The problem is the sand seal race does not happen until you've beaten the divine beast. So in all shrines in the past, we had to do all of this and beat an entire divine beast to do one shrine and a slow one at that. Mm. Like we had to actually do the race, win the race and play like 30 minutes of content just for that one shrine but being able to enter that shrine early from this one that's freely accessible saves like 20 minutes wow that's a lot yeah that's awesome so we're we gonna gets, fight mm -hmm. it gets a little bit more complicated than that but that would be too much for now some mm -hmm. scws which is the trick i just used are only possible if you like pause buffer your game mid-air because all of the shrines have like different load radiuses but it would literally be i could talk about it for like three hours and it would still be hard to explain <laughs> but you've already noticed um do you have any questions still um uh i did well so i assume we're are we gonna activate the fight now since we've made it over here yes right okay and as you can see the fight doesn't start yet though I'm mm -hmm. here and the fight is not starting. But usually when you get here, the fight starts. Uh, and this is because we haven't actually played the Eager Highlight yet. Um, right, you have to like at least go in and out. And that's the in important part. That's also all you have to do. Awesome. The, the thing that triggers this fight is not playing the Yiga Hideout. It's opening this door. That's what actually activates the fight. So we can skip the entire Yiga Hideout by, again, getting skew on the wall here. Like for all of the wall clips. Shield jumping here, so Link clips into the hideout. We climb over this wall and now we're in. We're in the Yiga hideout. Uh. We're gonna grab one of those duplex bows I talked about, which will be uh, important for later, like I said, for the weapon glitch. Mm -hmm. Oh, it only opens from the inside, right. Exactly. Right. Um, might as well grab some extra stuff. This room is actually kind of useful. Okay. There are some uh, gemstones around here. Right. That we can sell and you can already see technically i have access to the donor but i by doing this single clip uh i skipped the entirety of the eager hideout and i will prove this in a second mm -hmm. That's awesome. <laughs> by um opening the door and now the fight starts the cutscene is now active and master koga will actually show up <laughs> Like you need to go through my through my hideout first. I'm not coming out until you do. <laughs> so good. Okay. 
So there's some cutscenes here and I um, will actually just leave Koga here uh, in the overworld Ooh. hanging out. The uh, There's no very interesting fighting strats for Master Koga. Sure. Um, and there's another big cutscene afterwards. But I would like to show off some other stuff instead because <laughs> all this would allow us to do is would actually we would be able to enter the Divine Beast. Which... Um, Again, there's no big liches there. It's mainly movement stuff in there. And there's more interesting stuff around Hyrule Castle, around Korok Forest um, that I want to get to. So as soon as the fight starts, what I'll do instead is I'll warp away. And you warp out of the fight? I am actually not sure. I just assumed that you could. but Which makes me think I did it earlier. Pretty sure you just can. Well, we're about to find out. Looks like you can. <laughs> That's awesome. I've never considered that because you know once you get here you want to do the fight. Yeah, I think I think uh, he wouldn't like spin around at the bottom here. But the second you land in this area again, there's going to be like a quick transition cutscene and the fight would like just continue. Perfect. Well, I would say um, before we get into the next section, we've completed uh, the desert. We've seen the plateau. We've seen some other basics. This has been amazing so far. But I think it's time to just take a quick stretch break. Everybody can go ahead and try to digest all the information we've been learning so far. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm already doing some more stuff. Um, <laughs> so yeah, we will uh, be back in just a few minutes. Always good to get up, take breaks. Drink water, everyone. I haven't even been drinking water. I've been so distracted, or I mean in a good way, by <laughs> listening to everything in here. It's been awesome. So please um, do what you gotta do. We'll be back in just a moment. Don't go anywhere once you finish the whatever's you might want to get up for. So, cause I was going to say, don't go anywhere, but I just told you to, if you need to get up. Um, anyway, thank you all so much for being here so far. We are going to have tons more when we get back. Uh, and if you're watching on YouTube right now, feel free to join us over at twitch.tv slash games done quick to check out our live shows. Um, while I'm saying this, obviously we are, we are live. Uh, most, they start most nights at 7 PM Eastern. Um, and while you're there, Hotfix is funded in part. Uh, thanks to your subscriptions and bits. So please consider subscribing to help support future broadcasts. Um, yeah. So if you've missed out on any GDQ hotfix shows, you can um, watch the archive of the past runs in shows over at the YouTube channel, which, you know, I kind of started in the opposite direction, but youtube.com slash games done quick. All of the content's really easy to find and you can see other things like this. We've also had some other Zelda games on this show in the past, for example. And it's all amazing, and I'm having so much fun watching this. Um, so yes, yes, we will do some wonderful shout-outs for LimCube at the end of the show, uh, so you can find out where he is on all different platforms. And uh, in the meantime, we'll be back in just a minute. So make sure you get some water too, Lim. You're doing awesome. I, I will do that right now. <laughs> all right, awesome. We'll be back in just a moment. Hello, and welcome back to tonight's episode of Bombs Break Everything in This Game. Very true. I'm Kung Fu Frig Up once again, or you can just call me Fu. And again, I am joined by Limcube, who's been doing an amazing job showing us Breath of the Wild glitches. If you have missed out on the first half of this game, I'm sure he'll take some time occasionally to re-explain one or two of the things that you'll see pretty consistently. Oh, but sure. um, you can also go back and watch in the FOD or uh, whenever this is posted on YouTube to see um, these glitch explanations from the beginning. So it's up to you, but I'm going to leave it back to Lim to take it away and tell us what's coming up next. Yeah, I definitely want to go over the BLSS again. I'm actually going to do this as soon as I'm done with what I'm about to do here next to the Yiga hideout. Um, yeah. Which, throughout this entire run, I've been slowly collecting multi-shot bows. So far, we have two, which is not going to be enough because we need five. But uh, two is wow. the important number because when we land here, there is three Yiga uh, foot soldiers that spawn here. And all of them have a duplex bow. So by landing here, we get one, two, three duplex bows. Uh, right now, I have a normal bow on me. I won't be able to carry that any longer. And now I have five multi-shot bows. So um, oh. I am ready and good to go for my weapon duplication glitch. But right now, I don't have the best weapons yet, so I won't do that yet. Okay. I will also actually pick up these bananas. Um, which I'm going to use for an attack up elixir later. Um, it's a good ingredient to make a potion that makes you stronger, deal more damage, which uh, we need to do when we actually want to beat the boss fights. But no rupees. Interesting. Those rupees are okay. Um, in speedruns, I usually dodge those because when you pick them up, 
You get an item box that's unskippable. Oh, this is the uh, first time you've gotten one that size. And same for the blue one. Like, depending on the color, mm -hmm. there's always an item box. So that's why I have, like, the habit of dodging them. We won't really need them in the run, too. But sure. I guess that's why I do that. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm done with Gerudo Desert. I wanted to mainly show... I wanted to get some items here, like the bows that I need that I need for the weapon duplication glitch. And I wanted to show off the Master Koga stuff, the Shrine Coordinate Warp. We're going to go back to... Um, the Grape to Tower again, which is a great starting point for the Bow Lift Smuggle Slide. And this time we're going to okay. be sliding to Hyrule Castle. And then we're going to get the Master Sword. And uh, wait, what? The Master Sword? Isn't the Master Sword usually locked behind 13 hearts? How are you going to get the Master Sword? Oh, yeah. Uh, I will tell you once we're there. But and you don't since... need 13 hearts. <laughs> I will not need 13 hearts. Yeah, that's the first spoiler. But um, so the castle is actually between me and the Korok Forest right now. So we'll quickly stop there to grab some good items and show uh, a little bit of an interesting perspective of the castle. But uh, this is going to be a step by step breakdown again on how to do the ball of smuggle slide. Um, not necessarily a tutorial, but I will still explain the inputs if anybody wants to watch this on YouTube again and maybe pick up what I'm doing here. You could try um but yeah so essentially what you want to do and i'm going to do this with the square bomb in this example which it accelerates slower but you at least don't have the hassle of like chasing it around because it's rolling all over the floor right so you place on a bomb and then you hold out your shield with the zl button the next input is pretty easy you tap the zr button which is the right trigger and then a immediately after so it's like tap tap zr a and I didn't do it right there because I guess I tried too much in explaining. Quicker taps. <laughs> quicker taps made it work. I tapped both buttons quicker. And now Link is holding the bomb and the bow. This next step is the only hard part. Uh, while still holding the left trigger the entire time, which I originally used to hold out the shield, I'm jumping. And as soon as I'm mid-air, I have to press B and then pause immediately after. You don't have to press jump b pause all you need to focus on is that while you are mid-air at one point you have to press b and pause super quick like this you will be able to tell if it worked after you unequip your shield if you unequip your shield and the bomb falls down like this it didn't work you did it too slow now i'm gonna try to do it but actually get it but it's good that i showed this off if the bomb falls down that means your b and plus input was too slow if you do it fast enough, and this will work, you can already tell if you look behind the pause menu, Link is still mm -hmm. holding the bomb. If I now un unequip my shield, he goes back to the point where he's holding both the bow and the bomb. And the last step from here, you don't need to hold the ZL button anymore, is to aim with our bow. Just aim. And then press B. And now, if I am stepping up a ledge, and I will use this little step up around the tower, while holding B, I will be sliding. But again, if you're ever sliding with this glitch, you have to hold a direction on the control stick and you have to keep holding B the entire time. If you mm -hmm. let go of B or the left stick, you will fall. So as soon as I'm going up this ledge, I'm stepping up, I'm going to be holding forward and B the entire time and I'm sliding. And this part, I think everybody can do um, after some practice. But you can tell already I'm losing speed. I'm not going anywhere. So the hard part about this glitch is then while doing all of this, flicking your control stick from left to right quickly without ever hitting the neutral zone of the stick to build up speed. <clears throat> and you have Once... to do it facing the opposite direction you want to go because it's like the bomb is pushing yeah, you. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You have to basically face, the... your back has to face where you want to go, which is Hyrule Castle now. If the flicking is a little bit too hard for you, a slower but consistent way is you can kind of circle around like this, do like little spins. And basically, after you're done with the spin, hold a specific direction. Okay. That way you are slowly building up speed, but it's a lot easier on your hands and probably just easier to do mechanically. <laughs> oh my god, that texture doesn't know what to do. Um, can, Guardians is, is ever, um, mm -hmm. can Guardians ever... Can Guardians ever... Uh, I've forgotten the word that I'm looking for. Like, target you? That's the word. Oh, they from... can. This guy's about to do it. Oh, okay. Um, but, uh, yeah, even if you go inside this room, uh, you could already see... <laughs> this is essentially what happened earlier with the Magnesis Shrine, right? Oh. If you 
if you move if you move too far um too fast the game is not catching up um and the room wasn't even loaded in the cutscene wasn't either for quite some time so it finally caught up it finally caught up and actually this load is usually not this long the game still has some catching up to do okay but now so the, room, the one in the chandelier the room has loaded i will not this is not a bad bow but there's going to be a better bow um now that you say that though i actually won't be able to get any bow right now and this is because we don't have more space we only have five space right. we need to hold on to all of the multi-shot bows uh, to <laughs> equip to get our to get our weapon and uh, what i will get though right now is another banana and also a rush room the rock salt i guess just for for bonus points um a rush room now um we have five ingredients that increase our attack power later okay. for the boss fights to beat them faster but um the main reason i'm coming here is to get a weapon and also to show off a very interesting perspective of Hyrule castle okay <laughs> So there is um, a weapon here, Royal Guard Sword, 48 uh, damage, mm -hmm. but unfortunately very low durability. Yeah. Breaks after like 12 hits or something. I was just going to come to this wall um, to show off another shield clip. I'm going to save the game first. It's just another shield clip, but I think Hyrule Castle is the coolest location in the game to go out of bounds in, and you'll see why once I get mm -hmm. there. I'm just going to use this tiny little step to get this skew that I was using in other uh, areas, right? Those, I, I was Earlier I was jumping on like very steep slopes. Now I'm just using this tiny step to get the skew and I will be able to clip out of bounds. The cool thing in Hyrule Castle is you can oh. see everything. So you can see the mines that are underground. You can see um, all of the rooms, like there's like some hallways up there. You can even see... There's the armory up there. You can even see the sanctum in mm -hmm. like the way back. You can see Calamity Ganon already in his like cocoon uh, all the way up there. Um, What's that? There's like an unloaded texture that was there. You just passed it. Uh, it was probably water. There's a lot of water. You? Like, yeah, there's a lot of water randomly oh, above yeah. me. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Um, if we it's happen to hit that water, uh, I don't know if I will. Uh, sometimes. The game really uh, it just happened i am now swimming uh there's like all there's like water all over the place here i'm basically just swimming in there uh oh uh here it happened again but this time i actually hit oh my god uh water that's a lot higher so you could basically see link fly around i would actually not mind uh drowning because if you drown you um, land back in the last position where you touched the ground, which happened to be back in bounds. So that would actually get us back to where we started pretty efficiently. Wow, that... Wow. Oh, never mind. Oh, I touched the ground down here. Never mind. I thought I touched it uh, when oh, I saved. <laughs> I'll, I'll, have to, <laughs> I'll have to reload then. But I just want to show a little, show a little view of all of the castle rooms from out of bounds uh, the entire and i think this is actually common in video games um i don't know if it's common but i've seen this more than once the way water in this game works is the entire ground is water and whenever water surfaces they drag it from the bottom of the map up so basically the entire ground below the overworld is water but whenever there's a lake they pull the water from the ground all the way to the surface so if you were to go like below Hyrule, everything would be water. It would just be more water, yeah. Right. Interesting. Huh. So the main weapon I came here for, I haven't gotten yet. I will go there now. Is the and this sword, is... the 48, 48 strength sword, is that one you're going to be doing the durability glitch on? No. Okay. But the one I will be using it on will also be a royal sword, but it will be the royal guards claymore um, mm, okay, just, it is going to be a bit risky doing a wind pump from here because i'm probably going to get targeted you don't have a lot of time don't have a lot of time exactly <laughs> uh, usually the guardians are pretty bad at hitting link mid-air hopefully i didn't curse myself but yeah it worked out yeah, I just drop it in tight if I think they're going to be too accurate. <laughs> yeah. 
So I'm going into this room. And um, this is where the royal guards chambers. This guy usually doesn't hit me. He just stays in place. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, sure. This wall hasn't even loaded in yet. Oh, it just loaded in. And this shows how bad the game is at loading things. Oh. <laughs> like, I literally was walking. I was just running towards here, and it still didn't manage to load the wall in time. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, is um, there ever any reason to get the high roll, like the Hylian shield, aside from just doing 100%? It has the highest durability in the game. Right. So uh, getting that shield and then doing what I will be doing later, the durability glitch, um, you can apply the durability from the Hylian shield on other weapons. So you can make like a super durable Radiant shield, which like I said, is like one of the best weapons in the game gotcha. because it's so slick. But this is the weapon I came here for. This is the highest base damage weapon I can relatively easily get right now mm -hmm. at 72. Um, and I'm also going to grab this weapon, because this weapon has um, much better durability. So this is higher damage, this is higher durability. And what I do with the glitch later is I'm going to apply the durability from this weapon to this weapon, sure. and then duplicate the high durability version of the Royal Guards Claymore. So I make a lot of really strong Claymores, which is going to mm. make the boss fights a joke. Oh, oh, okay, I see, I see. Is there, so you, you can only, you can't like increase durability past the other items you have as the use. base weapon you use right and okay if i had the time the best weapon you can get without amiibo for base durability is the spring loaded hammer which is a little joke item you can get from kilton who's this guy that only shows up at night with a special stop right a shop he doesn't take uh rupees he takes mon which you get from turning in monster parts yeah wait um, that hammer how high is that, that hammer has the highest base durability i think it's 90 um, you can like hit 90 times with it. The only weapon with more is the Amiibo exclusive Big Goron Swords. And I think that has like 120 or 140. Somebody in chat probably knows better. But uh, the base web base game weapon without Amiibo, the Spring Loaded Hammer, I think has 90 um, durability, which is pretty nice. Gotcha. Um, can, you, can you only apply like sword, sword durability to sword durability? And no, sword weapon sword? to weapon, yes. Um, you can do bow to weapon, but you can do spear to sword or spear to claymore. Bows, right? Where melee weapons and shields are the three categories that have to stay within each other. Okay. But you can do spear to sword or mm -hmm. hammer to spear. If you duplicate the um, the claymore after you increase its durability, can you duplicate the Hylian shield? Yes, technically yes. Oh. You wouldn't want to do that though. Because the good thing about the Hylian, I mean, it's cool, right? The Hylian shield looks cool. It's a classic. But uh, if, just for efficiency, you wouldn't want to duplicate the Hylian shield because the only good thing about it is the durability. You would duplicate the good shield as in terms of like friction, like the Radiant shield, but you would apply the durability of the Hylian shield to it. You can't apply something like friction to the Hylian shield. Right. The only thing you can transfer is durability. Um you know what the like what the rating is out of for like the slickness of the shield like what would the highland shield be what would the radiant shield be uh, like I, I don't know if there's like values okay. the only thing i i noticed the difference between three uh three different ones and the tiers are like the worst ones are basically all shields uh, all yeah. shields are bad with like the exception wooden. of the um ancient shield and the Shields of Mind's Eye, as like a wooden Sheikah shield. Those ones oh. are pretty slick. Um, and the uh, Radiant Shield is in a league of its own. Okay. <laughs> interesting. Very interesting that that's the one. Okay. It's the one they use in Garuda for the Sand Seal Surfing, which is why I'm assuming they decided to make it like extra slick. Oh, that would make sense. Yeah, that's a good point. So I'm using a lot of wind bombs here because I need height. I'm gonna use the um, the woodland tower, which is this tower here. I will actually get another part of the map uh, later as a war point. Okay. Uh, because it's pretty close to Death Mountain, I'm gonna need to go to Death Mountain mm -hmm. for a little bit. Keep in mind, um, um, earlier was Limkey was explaining that uh, whenever you do the wind bombs, because I know he hasn't touched up on it since um, we got back from break. I don't think you were just doing. Yeah, you just you just did the sliding. Um, but with wind bombs, it's important to make sure that like when you're using that square bomb that you um, are facing in like an actual cardinal direction or else it won't 
be effective. Like it won't actually work. Additionally, um, you can aim ordinal. Ordinal is also safe and it is actually faster, but is it gives less corner, height. Like on the corner. Yeah, it's like exactly no northwest, exactly yeah. southeast. Gotcha. Um, but um, it will give more speed, less height. I wanted basically only height there, so I was always aiming cardinal in the, for those wind bombs that I just. Yeah, did. I feel like at, at this point, wind bombs are more useful for height specifically yeah. because you have sliding. So like, it make, would make sense that you want to stick with more of the cardinal directions. Exactly. Cool. So I'm, I'm learning. <laughs> really, really. Um, that is exactly my decision making there. So uh, this might be a little hard and it might take me more than one attempt. We'll see Go how it goes. Uh, because we are going to enter Korok Forest. I promised you we're getting the Master Sword. Um, but uh, Korok Forest is a bit annoying to get into. If you went here casually, you would know that in this forest, um, there's like a lot of this fog trying <laughs> to void you out. So what I did here is I made the game lag intentionally by pressing the menu, um, the D-pad quick menu. Every time you press the D-pad quick menu, you induce a little bit of lag to the game, mm. a little bit of extra lag. I did that there intentionally to make sure that when I wind bomb and open my paraglider, I'm currently on a lag frame. It's going to be a bit confusing. I'm not going to go too in depth, but essentially when you do a launch like this on a lag frame, the game, in order to compensate for that lag, increases your launch speed by 150%. It like tries to catch you up with the lag and you go faster. This is called a super mm. launch and makes okay. wind bombs a little bit more useful. And that was an easy way to basically just zoom past that barrier of um, the forest. Yeah, so basically you you made yourself go so fast that it couldn't um, void you out by having the fog surround you before you can land, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, yeah. So, this is the Master Sword. Unfortunately, we can't get it because we have four hearts. But, <laughs> and this is the big but. Um, the, and I made a huge video about this this year because the getting the Master Sword is probably the most ridiculous uh, history of glitches. Um, yeah, I watched the video. <laughs> you watched the video, yeah. Um, it's pretty crazy. So at first we thought we can only get it with 13 hearts, which if you pull this, there's this cutscene that plays, you can only get it with 13 hearts, right? And then mm -hmm. later um, a glitch was found that actually allows you to duplicate hearts. So you no longer need to get 40 shrines or like the vine beasts to get those hearts. You can duplicate hearts, it's faster. Um, what you can do now is you can light a campfire. Oh, and right. So what you do is you literally just place a piece of wood next to the master sword and you make a campfire out of this um, piece of wood. So what happens here is when you look up into the sky, when you sleep on a campfire, quickly when you wake up, your, co yeah, like your coordinates on the map desync for like the first couple of seconds. This also unloads the prompt around the Master Sword that would otherwise play the cutscene that checks for your heart count. Uh. Let's just sleep on the campfire here, wait until morning, and while I'm waking up, I'm just gonna constantly press A. So it's pretending to go to morning, but it still hasn't done the time check, so it won't actually change the time. Right. And we <laughs> just got the Master Sword. Do you just, you, do you spam A, basically? It, it's not, it's not, you don't have to spam that hard. I think I made a video about this and people were spamming like crazy. As long as you type know. it pretty quick, you're fine. Uh, you have like probably around like a second of time to oh, wow. uh, grab the sword before the trigger reloads. Okay. But yeah, the funny thing is like, if I'm grabbing the master sword now, the game still thinks it's there. Oh, <laughs> but you have it. I have it, and I even got the extra item slot for it. Do all um, the properties around it? Oh, wait, actually, I think, I'm not sure if I, if you get the extra item slot for it. Additionally, you can see main quest, the hero saw, this quest never completes unless you actually pull it. <laughs> I mean, I can try that. It looks weird. But, uh, <laughs> um, and you can actually pull this invisible sword if you get to, to 13 hearts. I don't think I have the time to do that today. 
That's okay. Uh, what's funny is while on this side, um, when you stand on this side, you get to pull the master sword. You can actually enter the trial of the sword. Uh, even now, uh, you need to, um, and I'm actually gonna get this out of the way right now. Uh, as soon as you, when you get the Master Sword and you have the DLC installed, the first time you reload the overworld, um, the game introduces you to the Trial of the Sword, which is DLC exclusive content. Mm -hmm. It's probably the hardest content in the game, specifically in Master Mode. Uh, honestly, a good challenge. Um, yeah, I'm sure. But, yeah, doing it casually um, is hard enough. For sure. <laughs> and uh, it, this actually makes one even more fun or more like an even harder challenge if you wanted to do this. You could technically do the try this over three hearts. Good luck, specifically in master modes. But yeah, um, yeah this is, uh, we have to get this cutscene out of the way. This is now, oh hey, yeah, you have the master sword. So the game acknowledges that we have it in our inventory, but we've never completed the quest for it. And we also will not do that today. Is Zelda never going to try to talk to you because you didn't? activate things for her or does she like, no no she's she, when she talks to us that's usually related to the vine beast stuff which we won't really do today but whenever she's talking mm. uh, that would still happen that's not really related okay i was just like i guess like we wouldn't hear her because we don't have blood moons either I don't think true she... that that's one that she talks there she also talks when you beat for the Vine Beast, she's like, oh, I'm so proud of you. You beat all the Divine Beasts. She also talks to you if you get the final memory. We could still do all of that, but we won't because right, it takes right, right, right. Time. I'm just thinking of all the time she might speak. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to get this other cutscene out of the way while I quickly um, explain again uh, the, the about the sword a little bit more. So again, this sword, um, you can throw it. Uh, it has the same mechanics, like it will eventually run out of charge and eventually also recharge. What we're watching right now is the Troll of the Sword cutscene. Um, it also powers up when you are next to metal. So it is a completely normal Master Sword with the only um, change that I think you actually don't get the dedicated item slot. Usually you get an extra item slot that's just for the Master Sword. So if you do this glitch and you don't have inventory space, it won't work. That's oh, important okay. maybe to know. Um, because you only get the dedicated slot when you actually pull it. Uh, the Master Sword has a dedicated item slot spot in case uh, if you didn't know that before. But you need an open slot if you want to do this glitch. It's very easy to do. Um, there's tutorials on YouTube that take like two minutes. Uh, but you can see it here. So here it says pull. If I press A here, I would still try to pull the Master Sword. But if I go here... Oh, that's so strange. <laughs> it says <laughs> place. So here, I could actually enter the Trial of the Sword. Uh, I will not do that right now because I have two hearts. But it's still um, interesting to know. Right. Actually, maybe my game crashes here. This is a very common crash spot. Okay, I didn't. We talked earlier about, before the show, mm -hmm. if there's a fast way to crash the game. The most common crash spot in the game is entering the beginning trials. It crashes like 20% of the time randomly. It didn't this time. Huh, that's so strange. Okay, yeah, I've never seen that actually. I don't really know why it does it, but it's actually surprisingly, it happens surprisingly often. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. we have the Master Sword now. Um, I wanted to now, now um, that we have basically moved around a lot, I wanted to go. We have a lot of the base equipment I needed. That's basically what this run was focused on so far. Uh, showing of glitches while collecting some items I need, like the attack up items, the equipment, the multi shot bows, the Master Sword. I have all of that now. So now I can focus much more on uh, some smaller interesting glitches and we're going to start again on the Great Plateau and make our way slowly and surely while showing off a ton of glitches to the boss fights. Ooh, okay, I'm excited. Um, the first thing that I'm going to show is a glitch that I would recommend people to try at home. Uh, maybe <laughs> not right now. Um, but maybe if you re-watch the bot, if you watch this on YouTube, you can rewind, you can take your time to learn this. And once you've seen it, you probably are going to want to learn this. And this is also the reason, mainly, that I mean, one of the two reasons I got the camera. But um, Breath of the Wild looks nice. And the only way we get to uh, usually see more of the game is by turning on pro mode. So pro mode disables the map on the bottom right and all that's left is the hard count on the top left. Right. And we can take that one step further. And I'm going to just go over the inputs just like they are. And you'll see what happens. So we'll start this out by doing 
weapon smuggling again. We did this earlier in the run when we brought the blue flame to the Hateno tech lab. So we place a bomb on the ground, we take out our weapon, and then we're going to pick up the bomb and then instantly pause the game after. Unequip our shield. Now Link is holding the bomb and the sword. We can get rid of that bomb. No, we don't need it anymore. But Link is now smuggling the sword. He's like kind of randomly holding it. And the next step that we need to do is we need to re-equip our shield. I'm going to use the D-pad to re-equip my shield. Mm -hmm. Shield is back and it's equipped now. From here, I'm going to hold out the shield with the left trigger. And I'm not going to let go of this button until I'm done with the glitch. This button is going to be held the entire time. Constantly holding this button. Okay. The next step I'm going to do is I'm going to switch from the bomb rune to the camera rune. I have the camera rune now selected. And then the next step is I'm going to pause the game and hold an item. Any item. I'm going to hold the chili. If I now unpause, Link is holding the item and the sword. Looks a little okay. strange. Uh, we're going <laughs> to take cool. this a step further by switching from uh, one weapon to another. Now Link is holding the item, the sword and the shield. Uh, he's getting a little busy at this point. <laughs> and now the last step uh, that I have to do is I have to press the rune button, so L, which is going to be the camera, and plus at the same time. If I now press B, I'm playing Breath of the Wild in first person, um, which oh, is wow. something that otherwise you can't do. Oh. And it allows for some pretty cinematic shots. Uh, that you otherwise can't see like this. So what, what's happening in the background here is uh, I'm basically in the camera rune, but I also basically deleted the over, like the hut of the camera rune. Yeah, and you, you, it looks like a, like a different game. It looks like VR, Breath of the Wild. Yeah. And this is how like a lot of the like intro shots and um, uh, like, I don't know, animations, oh. like combat montages for the game are done now. This is a, another advantage of the game being uh, stuck at five in the morning because we get to see like lighting like this. Okay, you but would it's... you play this in actual VR? Because I know they have their little, um, I have the the Switch kind of VR. Right, like the toy cool. cons or whatever they call it. I, I mean, yeah. if there was like a fully fleshed out VR version for this, I mean, damn, that would be... Uh, Amazing. Uh, <laughs> this this glitch doesn't go that far, unfortunately. So while you can't, when you you can walk around, you can get some cool shots. Um, as soon as you press like B or like you try to attack, this ends. This is just for like cinematic shots, and I think yeah. it does a good job at that. But you can't just straight up like yeah fight and beat the game this way. But uh, okay. depending on where you are, you can get some really cool shots of the game that you can't get any other way. Oh, so cool! It's like, it's like perfect for like your like desktop background starting soon stream scene or something. It, it even adds like the letterbox is just too good. That's true. Oh, that's really true. Yeah, especially since it's five fifteen all the time. <laughs> yeah, it looks amazing. Yeah. But yeah, I think uh, honestly, if you rewind that enough, what I just explained, and just follow my steps, you can do that too. It's it's not hard. Um, you just have to probably rewind the video a couple of times and do the steps, but it's pretty nice. Yeah, that's super cool. Ooh. All right, that's first person Breath of the Wild. Well, now <laughs> we will go and um, get ourselves some items because we still are going to have to beat the boss fights at the end. And I don't really have a quick way to set up a slide here, so I'm probably going to go for some wind bombs. I was trying to make the game lag there again, what I explained earlier, but it actually depends on what you have on your screen. If there's like mm -hmm. a lot of like forest or a lot of um, very like intricate areas on the ground, mm -hmm. it's a lot easier to get lag and speed up your launch. Because there are uh, a lot more, a lot more um, like objects. Render, exactly. Mm -hmm. Which is it's actually funny, like technically this becomes more consistent when you use the VR mode you just talked about. Because when you use the VR mode, the game gets rendered twice. Once for the left and once for the right side, so oh. you can make the game lag even more. It's not that it's not that big, but um, it's a little bit of a niche um, trick. 
all I wanted to go, uh, where I wanted to go was the stable. So, um, lag is very important in this game for um, multiple things, but uh, menu overloading, which is the base glitch we are going to use to increase our inventory and duplicate weapons and so on and mm -hmm. so forth, is um, much easier to do when the the game is laggy. And the stable is a good spot to do this. So funny. Uh, I just think of like N64, like a lot of, especially a lot of games and speedruns, even even games that like aren't being speedrun were built with some of the lag in mind for mechanics to work, like DK64, like you had to actually rely on the lag being there, which makes certain things almost impossible without it in like, you know, the Wii U emulation and stuff. Exactly. But, um, it's so funny that, you know, you would think that that's really useful for like older consoles, but you know, finding ways to create lag in it's really you know, true. companies are working to like so hard to remove it for better experiences for people. It's like still so useful for speedruns. I know. It's amazing. And this is a great example of it. So I have those five multi-shot bows and I bought that one shock arrow because the only thing that's important that is that on my multi-shot bow, I have a shock arrow equipped. This is what matters. This allows to allows us to add more lag, overload our menu more, which is what allows. One. Yeah, it just, it, just, it, just, it just has to be equipped. But like right now it's like equipped, so it's like lying on the bow. Mm -hmm. That's the important part. And um, so what I'm going to do is I um, am holding this Royal Guards Claymore. So this is the weapon I have equipped. And then I'm holding out the bow with the shock arrow equipped. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop my bow and then equip another bow. And every time I'm unpausing the game here, I have to go quick. I'm going to have to unpause here, so I give the bow time to fall down, and then immediately pause again. Okay. I'm going to repeat this. So I'm going to drop this bow, equip this bow, unpause, pause. I'm going to drop this bow, equip this bow, unpause, pause. I'm do you want to this bow, do you equip this bow. Mm -hmm. Should it have like a frame to land on the ground? Mm, no, you want to spend as little time out of the menu as possible. Okay, okay. And now Link looks weird. This is when you know you got it. If you look at the right, it's just a oh, it? <laughs> This is the important step. Uh, this, this tells us our menu is now overloaded. <laughs> uh, I'm going to have to move a little bit to the right here and then basically try to quickly pause the game again. <laughs> I'm sorry, I find that really funny. We can see the head is still floating, which means our uh, menu is still overloaded. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hold the Royal Claymore and then unpause and pause again. You can tell, even though it hovers the Royal Claymore, Link is still currently holding the Royal Guards Claymore on his back, right? Can you see that in the back of the menu? It's like the, the black weapon instead of the silver one. Oh, yeah. It's stuck oh. out of his like head, basically. Now, this is where it gets interesting because I'm going to attack. I'm going to jump attack um, right now. And what's going to happen is because I'm jump attacking with the Royal Claymore, the game is going to subtract one durability, right? But it's going to check the base durability of the Royal Claymore, which is pretty high. But I technically still have the Royal Guards Claymore equipped. So while I would usually lose one durability, the game will instead set the durability of the Royal Guards Claymore to the Royal Claymore durability minus one. That's wild. I don't know if that, was, okay. if that made sense. But basically by doing this, I now have a Royal Guards Claymore with the durability of the Royal Claymore. So I'm going to get rid of all of this now, reset it back to normal. Right now I'm holding Royal Guards Claymore, right? The black weapon. But when I press D-pad, it says Royal Claymore. So again, it kind of glitched out. This Claymore now has the durability of the Royal Claymore. We will see that later in the fights. It's gonna last long. Okay. So that was step one. Now we have a good Royal Claymore with high durability. I'm gonna repeat this step, but now I'm gonna duplicate the Royal Guards Claymore. So okay. again, we're overloading our menu. We are holding out the shock arrow uh, on a multi-shot bow. Drop, equip, unpause, pause. Drop, equip, unpause, pause. Drop, equip, unpause, pause. <laughs> Drop, okay. equip, unpause, pause. Link looks funny. I walk to the side. <laughs> I pause again. And now what I can do is I can equip a different weapon. For example, this X. 
it's equipped. I unpause and pause the game. Then I throw away this X. But the weapon that Link will throw away is not going to be an X. It's another Royal Guards Claymore. Mm, okay. So every time I equip a new weapon, I unpause and pause the game, throw away the weapon, unpause and pick it up. I'm picking up a Royal Guards Claymore. And oh. one with broken durability. So I get this weapon now, unpause, pause, throw it away, pick it up. I get this weapon now, unpause, pause, throw it away, pick it up. And I get this weapon now, unpause, pause, throw it away, pick it up. Now I have seven or like six Royal Guards Claymores with like 30 durability instead of 12. So I have like <laughs> 10 thousands of damage on me now. Wow. Compared to the ones, to the damage that I had earlier. It's really powerful. It's uh, the only problem is that in order to do this glitch, you have to get those multi-shot bows. So it's mm -hmm. uh, only really useful in very long runs. It also takes some time because it's not like there's no good equipment in the game. Right. But um, it's just that uh, this is only useful. So is there some weapons that are incredibly useful to duplicate. Uh, what stands out is, you said it, getting the Hylian shield durability on a different yeah. weapon is massive. Um, it allows you to, uh, on a different shield, right? You can make an almost unbreakable, perfect shield surfing shield. That's yeah. a great thing. You can make, like what I just did, super powerful two-hand dam two damage weapons. Those are great for all of the mini-boss fights because you can just spin to win if you have like, a lot of stamina. <laughs> that's what you do That's what you do in like 100%. You just spin to win. Even with um, um, Divine Beasts, I feel like that would be really useful. Even with Divine Beasts. Even, like, yeah. every, everything you fight, two-hand weapons are really good because not only can you just spin to win, if you actually spin to win, but you face the back to the enemy... Uh, sometimes you hit twice per rotation. So you, with yeah. this weapon, that's 140 damage per spin. It's a lot. Um, <laughs> that's wild. Okay. And that's um, cool. another great weapon, that's actually probably the best to duplicate, is the reward you get for clearing the Vine Beast of Armedo, the bird. You get the Great Eagle Bow. The Great Eagle Bow has amazing durability, amazing range, an amazing fire rate, so it shoots very quickly. It's the triple shot bow from Rito. So in uh, in 100% runs, you usually duplicate that bow a lot. It helps that it itself is a multi-shot bow. So at one point, you can just constantly make like a great eagle bow factory. You have only great eagle bows, and whenever you run low, you use the great eagle bows to make more great eagle bows. It's uh, pretty nice, pretty neat. That's awesome. Um, also, I want to say that this is a really, we're, we're making really good time for our estimate, it, which is currently spin to win. <laughs> spin to win. Nice, nice. <laughs> we will get there. Um, I want to make one quick stop before, I mean, maybe not that quick, it's still going to be in a cool glitch. And this is kind of where I'm going to be bringing it back to where I talked about the snapshot. Uh, Breath of the Wild constantly evolves and some glitches never really see, um, I mean, this one people have probably seen, but it never actually really made it into speedruns. I'm going to start by using Amiibo. And I'm going to use the uh, Super Smash Brothers Amiibo, which spawns Epona. Um, I just need a horse. This is like the fastest way to quickly get one. Um, I will just register Epona here. Do you just have, like, you have your, your most useful Amiibos, like, right next to you for these? Basically, yeah. yeah. There's a couple ones uh, that we use in any percent for strong attack up foods. But uh, I had this one ready for the run. So, cool. Epona, um, we just need any horse. Um, but uh, Epona is fast for me to get here. And I'm going to be riding to the... Uh, mounted archery mini game, which broke the game, and I think it was 2019. Okay. Maybe I can get this first try. This might take me a, a couple attempts. Right? How? Uh, I'm, I'll, I'll just let it talk for itself. I'll just explain okay. what I'm doing, and then you will see the result. Great. So um, I'm gonna. The, the reason I had registered opponent as you only are allowed to play that mini game when you have a registered horse you have to get to the sky on a registered horse mm -hmm. so this is the fastest way to get a horse not only that but she's like automatically oh perfect bond and like yeah. best speed Bonded. exactly right this is like the best choice 
pretty much. It's actually not the fastest horse. There's two locations in the game where you can get a faster horse. Uh, but Epona is the best stats overall, like four for everything. Some people would maybe argue the Royal Horse is pretty good stats too, but this, this is just, it's, it's pretty useful. People used to use this in actual speed runs for even any percent in the past, but mm, gotcha. so neither anymore because we just slide now, but yeah. You have um, to register a horse rather than just having a horse, right? Like you said? Exactly. Okay, because darn. I would have said, like, what about the God of the Mountain? <laughs> True, true. That would be great. It has to be registered. Like, you can't use a bear either, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, like, oh, I won't do that. Yeah, it looks like I have to get this first try or I have to reload because I only have exactly 27 rupees and okay. it costs me 20 rupees to do this. So, we'll see. So, I'm going to start the minigame and instead of actually playing the minigame, I'm going to turn around and I'm going to ride up to this hill. Okay. And I'm going to wait a little bit. I'm going to wait until the timer gets a little bit lower. And my goal is going to be, when the timer hits around 13, 12 seconds, my goal is going to be to jump off my horse and land on one of those wild horses down there. Oh. And I want to land in a way that I'm going to be on the horse, struggling to tame it, but not actually tame it. So that's okay. the goal I'm going for here. Uh, and sometimes the horse kicks you away, which is why this might take me one, two, three attempts. The horses can be really annoying. But I'm gonna jump about now. And you don't wanna land on one of those spotted horses because the spotted horses will actually not have to, they, they won't have to be tamed. So I'm on the horse now. Uh, oh. I'm about to run out of stamina. So I'm gonna eat one of those dishes I prepared earlier for this moment. And even another one just to be safe. And the minigame is going to end. So I ended the game on a different horse I started it on. Oh. And this is about to break the game. Okay, of course. <laughs> right. So as you can see, um, my horse is now leaving, even though Epona is still on the same spot. <laughs> I will slowly, slowly but surely uh, leave the realm now. Um, I I'll wait a little bit longer. Um, Looks like I've only hit zero targets. Nothing to write home about. Unfortunate. Um, but I'm in a hurry, actually, Jeannie. I'm going to have to leave. I'm going to have to leave you hanging there. And uh, now that I'm flying away on my horse, horses are just something else, just like Jeannie said. I, um, I will walk away from this location to the shrine that I uh, have activated earlier. <laughs> Goofiest animations I've ever seen. It is pretty funny, <laughs> and it's gonna get a little more crazy. I I I know that sounds unbelievable, but so uh, good. it will. So um, we have now um, warped away, and the problem is, uh, even though we warped the way, the game actually still thinks we're standing on a horse, right? Um, and what this allows us to do is uh, just to jump uh, into space, if you want to. So now, uh, since the game still thinks we are on a horse, it will constantly think we are also on the ground. So this we call moon jump, and we can literally jump forever. We can jump wherever we want to go. Is there a ceiling uh, in the game? Is there what in game? Like a ceiling? Uh, I think eventually. I've never actually tried. I, I tried it earlier, and I was mashing so much that I started to like not wanting to mash anymore. I was still gaining height. Uh, I think there probably is eventually, but yeah, it would take us a long time to get there. Like there's gotta be. That's so, there, there will be. That's so funny. Um, yeah, the thing is also there's no fall damage anymore. So if you fall down, it's just like nothing happens. Um, and I'm gonna combine this glitch with something great now. I'm gonna just unequip my bow here. And I'm gonna enter this shrine. We're gonna be stacking glitches on top of each other now. Oh no. Okay, I mean, oh yes. So even though it's yes. loading a whole new area, it still remembers that. So this glitch literally only ends if I turn off the game or if I, if I, um, <laughs> oh, I'm stuck. Looks like I'm stuck. Um, if I turn off the game or if I uh, sit on another horse or any mount, like the bike would work or like a lot of the mount would actually work to to stop the glitch again. Because so that's when the game... So now what? Uh, what do I do now? now? Uh, probably just reload. Oh, wait. Can okay. I still bomb myself? Let me see. Oh, I can still bomb myself. Nice. Um, sometimes you get stuck, which is... Uh, the, the, the problem with this is you can't combine this glitch well with the other techniques. 
Okay. It's good for casuals that want to do this for the first time and just jump around everywhere. It's really fun to explore the world like this. For sure. But it doesn't really work well with like the bullet time bounce because you can't really open your glider. The only way you can open your glider in this state is using Rivali scale. Mm. Uh, and you get stuck sometimes. It's um, It can be frustrating to deal with, but it is cool. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, stack another glitch on top of this. This is apparatus storage. This right here is an apparatus. This is what we used. Uh, every 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 time there's a terminal like this, where when you press A, you get to control something with motion controls, like this puzzle. Right. We call these apparatus. By doing a specific input here, holding out your shield, pressing crouch and camera at the same time, you can activate the apparatus while taking a picture. You can delete this picture, pause the game, and then load a save file from earlier. Okay? Okay. So I'm going to load this save file. The one that I just got from entering and the shrine. still has the other glitch activated. I will still have the other glitch active, but I will have another glitch active too. How does it not reset? That's so interesting. Uh, yeah, that, that is interesting. So if I did it right, um, not only should I have the um, moon jump glitch now, but also the apparatus storage glitch. And the apparatus storage glitch breaks the game a little bit more in the sense you can do lots of things with it. This is what we use, for example, to duplicate hearts. But one small niche use of it is that you um, you save the temperature from inside the shrine. So if since I'm next to Death Mountain, you can maybe already tell where this is going. Uh, we're going to be going to Death Mountain, but different. Oh! Um, if I did it right, I shouldn't have to worry about... Um, it's getting cold. About Oh, it is actually still getting cold. So maybe loading the wrong file there uh, messed me up. It should be fine either way. Uh, the only reason I'm coming up here is um, I can show off the apparatus st storage glitch afterwards once again just to see that it actually works. I think the reason it didn't work is because when I loaded the save file, um, I loaded the save file that was inside that shrine. So maybe the game actually remembered that I had pressed A on that apparatus. Uh, I should have probably loaded another save there. Hmm. The only difference that that would have made in our file here is that if you do it right, and I will show this again maybe later just to make sure that we know it works, it would have... Um, it, that way I can actually show another glitch, so it works out in our favor, um, okay. which is going to help us to uh, not get burned anyway. That was my whole intention, right? I wanted to jump up here not set up without fire. getting burned alive, right? Yeah. But... Um, there's actually another cool trick that you can do to not have that problem. And you can see, even though I'm getting, um, even though I'm not really, uh, even though I'm getting a lot of height, like I'm almost basically at the peak of that mountain, right? Also, mm -hmm. great sound while you, uh, it's just so fun to play this. Um, even though I'm getting a lot of height, I'm really not fast. Like the only way I can go faster with this is if I had like speed food, so Link would run a little bit quicker. But you um, like whistle glitch in con in conjunction. Exactly. So if I try to do like a wind bomb here, if I hold out a bomb, I'm like holding it because I'm not in the air, right? Oh. So I, I can't actually do it because the game still thinks I'm uh, on the ground. What about stasis launching? Uh, stasis launch, there's like a weird way to make it work, but even if you got launched, we couldn't open the glider. It's the same problem, because oh, right. uh, the glider would obviously only open if we are mid-air. Oh, but you uh, don't take fall damage, so... You don't take fall damage, right. Okay, this is real quick. I'm about to catch on fire. Okay. One thing you can do when you are catching on fire, and this is going to happen here, if you spin your weapon, the fire stops. You literally just need to do a charge attack. So if you ever want to make it up to death mountain early, you start catching on fire, you start a spin attack, the fire stops every time. <laughs> and uh, what's good about doing this while in moon jump is um, that now we could even do this mid-air because um, we can always spin attack. But mm. even if you don't, if you just walk up here, you wait until you catch on fire and then you do the spin attack. And you repeat. And if you do it fast, the most you will lose every time is like a half a heart. So if you come up here with like two, three cooked durian meals, you can just walk up until you hit the city, right? And then you can buy the gear that you get in yeah. the city here, the flameproof right. gear. 
So yeah, I'm just gonna spin the weapon midair and then keep jumping. It looks like we're about to get attacked by some boulders. Hopefully they don't hit us. Uh, I have not prepared for this scenario. I do have fairies in case. Let's hope for the best. Uh-oh. They are still attacking us. Do you need to not be on fire? No, it looks like I'm okay. okay. Um, is that... So, is that... What? So, are those... Those don't always land. Those look like... Which one? Where? What is triggering that? Uh, just, just getting here. So uh, when you first get here, it's like Rudania, the one, the divine beast that we are about to get introduced to, right. is apparently like knocking on the mountain, and the first time you get here, it like auto triggers. And there's like oh. a, uh, like some other locations where they fall down. They will also fall down uh, when you later when you attack the divine beast, and you have to do the little escort mission with right. the Unobo. That's what I remember. If Unobo gets caught, then they also fire. But mm -hmm. it's just like the Divine Beast causing those to, uh, to happen. I don't know why I don't have that in my I don't have a very good memory, so. <laughs> no, I mean, it's it's pretty random. Like, there's a lot of those random encounters that I would also constantly forget. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the uh, entire reason I came is one, to show off this glitch, but I also want to show off one more glitch. I am actually running a little low on food. So hopefully we can clutch this out because all I need is to activate the shrine up here and then I'm going to return with the apparatus storage glitch just to show that it will actually make me immune Okay. and um, and also oh you know what actually one thing that I didn't check I can explain it in a second is um, there's actually two di wait how is my food looking oh god this is gonna be close uh, there's actually two different versions of apparatus storage. The ver version that I was using um, back then is the version without a memory. It was going to be okay. a little bit confusing, but um, mm. in order to actually, in order to actually duplicate hearts using um, apparatus storage, you have to do a special version of apparatus storage, okay. a version that uh, where you also watch a memory after um after doing it okay and um i'm thinking if there's any place there's actually a place okay we have uh, like just enough time because it's probably the thing up there is gonna be like the last major glitch before we go to the boss fights that i want to show uh sure. that i can show it either way um i first want to see um good time if we need the memory or not but um so, okay, what I'm also just realizing is that I would like to get rid of the glitch now and I won't be able to unless I restart the game. So I'll quickly do that uh, because Epona is too far away. So we're just going to be quickly restarting. Oh, because you would need a horse, right? Mm -hmm. And you can't call her? Uh, you can't... Could you use the you her. to rewarp her or something? I don't know. Uh, also, I'm... Uh-oh. Uh I am very interested to see where this autosave actually is. <laughs> it, looks uh, like in the middle of the sky. it looks weird. And I know moon jumping definitely messes uh, messes up the autosaves a little bit. Let's see what happens here. Okay. It showed us Hateno. And we are in Hateno. Do we have the shrine active? We do. Okay, good. Okay. I didn't lose the progress. So, uh, we have our glider again. We are no longer moon jumping because we restarted the game. Okay, nice. And I will show apparatus storage now. So, I will either confirm that the temperature storage only works with the memory version. This is like some nerd stuff right now. But um, I will show what apparatus storage does other than that. So, I will go and here again. Activate the camera. Can you explain? Yeah, so the camera, you take a picture of it, like it's at the same time you activate the actual apparatus. Right. So what I essentially do is when you activate it, you go into the state of the apparatus, right? Okay. Uh, but by taking a picture at the same time, I can delay that animation just enough so I can load a different file 
so in the back of the game's mind is like, oh, I just activated the apparatus. I want to go into the state where Link can control the apparatus with motion controls. And while that's happening, we are we don't really understand it, but we are assuming the game disabled some of the physics because it doesn't want Link to move around. Maybe Link would get hit by the ball in the maze and it, right. that's not supposed to happen. Mm -hmm. So what definitely happens, regardless of memory or not, is Link's paraglider breaks. So this is my glider now. It just doesn't work. Uh, if I want to try and glide, I'm just going to fall. Oh, weird. Like so um, maybe I'll jump from like a bigger cliff to show. And then I will warp to Death Mountain to confirm if the temperature storage um, will work or not. That looks pretty so, even. Yep, that looks like it's not working, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm jumping off. I'm using the glider, but I'm just falling. That's so strange. Okay. No real gliding happening here. Yeah. So what I do now is I'll um, go up here. And I will save the game there because that's the save I'm going to load once I do the apparatus torch again. Because, um, and I think that's actually what I did wrong now that I think of it. Um, apparatus storage, I think, does get lost after the second warp. Where moon jump actually stays active the entire time. There's so okay. many glitches, like it's so easy. So, like you can already see there. Um, it's hot. If you see these like sparks flying around and you can see it there, Link is about to burn. But I'm going to oh. save the game. I will say I will keep the save and I'm once again going to walk back to the shrine and reconfirm if this is possible or not. Because again, there is one cool glitch up here where I would like to be able to not burn. The worst right. case is we can always like get some flame gear or get mm -hmm. the memory to make sure. But um, that's the last thing I want to show before we go to boss. Because you'd warped, it cancelled out the apparatus glitch. Um, yeah, again, one warp should usually... Uh, oh, yeah, true, true. That's that's actually why, probably. Like, just loading a save file sh uh, should be fine. But if you warp, I think it's overwritten. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So, so, the, app, so the warp will get rid of it. Yeah, so now, since I have the save up on the mountain, I should be able to do the glitch and then just load that save. And then the temperature should be fine. If not... You need the extra memory. I feel like I remember that you don't. This is why mm -hmm. I was even tr trying to show this off. Gotcha. Let's see and confirm it. So apparatus well, storage. To think, like, um, to think that like saves will actually load certain like game states, basically. Like things that yeah, you yeah, exactly. And the like, interesting why? thing is Isn't the it? save loads like more the location and less the game state. It's actually very true for this game. So let's see uh, first of all if this has worked. It okay. has. So now the temperature is stuck to what it was on the um, on the shrine, right? We're no longer okay. burning uh, because um, we just loaded the save. So this is what I was what actually meant to do. Walk on lava then. Oh God, help. Um, I can't, I'm pretty sure, uh, because lava would still kind of act like water. It would still void me out. So okay. as soon as I touch it, I would basically that this is already how lava works. It doesn't like instantly kill you. It uh, works like instantly drowning in water. If you fall in, you land on the last spot. Um, oh, you see that glider is also broken again. But uh, this time we can get close here without flame protection. And we are good to go. Maybe I can even, can I like walk towards it? How close can I get? Okay, actually touching it still seems to damage me. I, I, I got one out of damage there. So the damage I would usually take here comes from the temperature being high, but I guess lava has its own like hitbox. Right. Um, but yeah, at least we got to show off our product storage. Again, there's a different version of it using a memory that on top of all of this also allows us to... Um, uh, also allows us to... Uh, is this gonna work? Uh oh, to duplicate hearts, that's not good. Oh. Hopefully I can make that one stay up there. I remember using this or was it something similar and you like put it on another metal box and then you can like fly right. around. Right, that's the idea. Ah. Um, this glitch is a little outdated, but it's kind of cool to see. I personally very much dislike um, controlling this. It's pretty yeah. hard to do, um, specifically with the motion controls. But the idea is basically when you set two minecarts on top of each other, and ideally you want to do this on like relatively even ground, otherwise taking off is going to take 
quite some time. And th the problem is there is not many mine cards in the game. There's like right. here, there's a couple. There's like one random one in Hyrule Castle. And that's pretty much it. Um, so you don't really have much to work with when you do this glitch. It's like, if you're really good at this, once you have, and we call this the flying machine, once you have it set up, you can technically take it anywhere and like just fly around wherever you want. Oh god, this is not looking good. Um, hello, please. Hello. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember uh, seeing like examples kind of like it and, and hearing that it's pretty difficult to control. It's very difficult to control. And uh, there's even like a different version of it where you use, instead of using a second minecart, you use a metal box right. on top of a minecart. And that is the worst. It's so bad. Um, I would really not recommend going for it. Hopefully I can at least uh, take like a little flight here eventually. Please Are you trying to look for like seven the ground? Yeah, I'm looking for some even ground to take off on. Okay. Uh, because right now I'm trying to like stack this minecart on top of the other, but it is not cooperating with me at all. So how do you that. know when you have it? Um, just from how the minecarts look. Like this minecart that I'm placing should push like basically like this. And now I guess we hope for the best. This is already looking bad again, but maybe it's good enough to try. Um... Um, I mean, we're kind of moving, you know? Yeah. Uh, maybe I can save this to the point where I can at least fly a little bit. I mean, we are. Yeah, yeah, we're kind of flying, you know? Like a little bit. It's still pretty cool. You, you, get, you get the idea. Yeah. Uh, and then again, you kind of steer this with motion controls. And then you crash against the wall and everything was for nothing. But if you are really good at this glitch, you can fly through the entire world. There's actually right. uh, a setup that you can do, which is really good for the most for most areas. If you wear one piece of like flame protection, let's say the the pants that give you flame protection, mm -hmm. and you also wear um, two pieces that give you cold protection, you can if you get good at this glitch, which I really don't recommend i wanted to show it off because it's literally a spaceship essentially because think about it we have the slide now it's so much faster to set up we can set it up anywhere it basically does the same um and we don't have to constantly use motion controls to use it yeah. but if you wanted to get good at this glitch um if you use that setup you could fly anywhere in the world without ever really taking damage because you're prepared against the cold you're prepared against the heat you have it basically uh, all, yeah. all, all yeah. covered. Huh. Okay. So that is the last little movement glitch I wanted to show off. I am going to make my way towards the boss fights and show an interesting skip there. And then also one big thing, very interesting thing, literally at the very end, at the very last fight of the game. Oh, okay. Is there anything, um, I know besides like that hammer potentially for durability, but is there any other reason that Kilton is useful outside of 100%? Um, for like speed running sake? Yes. Uh, um, not really. He's actually required for 100%. Right. It's the interesting part. Because uh, in a 100% run, uh, according to our current rule set, it's really hard to make a good 100% rule set because there basically isn't true 100% in this game unless you said play every mini game, get 999 of each item, beat every mm. enemy, um, and whatnot. Um, the only thing that's in the game that kind of tracks completion is the little map meter in the bottom left. But that also doesn't cover everything because it only covers locations like Koroks and shrines on the map. Mm -hmm. There is no great. Basically, we, we made a route set that we believe covers most things, right? Yeah, and, main quest, side quests. Um... Right. And um, also some of the armor upgrades, we decided we only have to upgrade the armor that's permanent, the one that you can't sell, that made sense for us. Okay. Um, and uh, this guy, we don't need his weapon. Um, that made sense for us. Uh, only getting the um only getting the permanent armor upgraded like the zora armor mm -hmm. and um one i know it just randomly loaded and it was like one, that was not loaded nope 
One thing that we wanted to include is the star menu. So when you press plus, there's like a menu on the right here. There's star items. Right now I have two. Those are key items, the paraglider and the Sheikah Slate. If you play the game, you hear what you'll have is you'll have the champion abilities, you'll have horse yeah. gear, you'll have uh, the uh, Hestu's amazing gift, Hestu's gracious gift. Uh, we received that they're getting all 900 Korok seeds. Um, so it's, it's, it's so useful. It's great. Thank you, Asu. Um, but w three items there are the um, the medals of honor, and the medals of honor is what Kilton gives out after um, defeating each set of mini bosses. So in this game, there's Hinox uh, mini bosses. There is uh, Talus mini bosses and Molduga mini bosses. If you beat all of them from Kilton, you get a Medal of Honor. And oh. uh, by the way, what I'm doing here is I'm just running through the castle and getting some final equipment I need before I uh, can beat the bosses relatively easy. Uh, I love that. Yeah, that guy just is uh, a quick 10 bomb arrow spawn. Um, pretty into going here, you know. Yeah, the main reason I come down here is there's a cooking pot and I need to make my attack up food. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the Medals of Honor um, are part of the 100% run, so you need to talk to Kilton to get those. Right, Otherwise well, if you're doing a side quest, it, one of them involves talking to him. Yeah, getting a picture seven. of Kilton. Yeah. Right. Right. Good point. So this guy is probably about to load in on us again. The reason I'm getting rid of him is because the boomerang is useful for the for Thunderblight. And um, we want to use his cooking pots. And you can't cook if there's enemies nearby. Mm, okay. Well, you yeah. know what I do? I actually have an idea. Um, this is not a glitch, but a bit of game knowledge that will help me out here. So in this chest below me, there is a dragon part. It is Nadra's Fang. I'm not sure who has messed around with lots, a lot with cooking in this game, but adding Nadra's Fang to a dish um, gives the dish a huge duration boost. Ooh. So normally, a, uh, a, the best thing to use for that is a dragon horns, but fangs work pretty well. So if I use four bananas and Nadra's Fang and cook them in a cooking pot, I'm getting a attack a potion that lasts for 18 minutes. Oh, wow. I never knew that uh, the fang was there. Or the, yeah, the fang was there. That's wild. Yeah, that's a, okay. mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's nice to have. Okay. It's very helpful. <laughs> so I have a strong potion now that I'm going to use to beat the boss fights. Uh, the only thing I'm getting here is three more ancient arrows. Okay. Which are super helpful. Super helpful, lots of damage. Mm. We can't one-shot the boss fights, obviously. But we can do a lot of damage. Mm -hmm. Where is that? And then I'm gonna make... <laughs> where, I, where is where I am? Yeah, so it seems like any... Will any dragon part increase the duration or no? Yes, and uh, it doesn't matter which dragon it is. It only matters which part. The most effective is the horn. A dragon horn boosts the duration up to 30 minutes. So you could do, you could have a 30 minute level three speed up potion, a 30 wow. minute level three attack up potion. There's no, there was no horn nearby, but if there was, that's what I would use. Right, makes sense. That's, that is very, very long. Oh, exactly. So I did use two wind bombs here to enter the final arena of the game. Uh, well, not quite. The final arena is technically where the Dark Beast boss fight is. But um, before, and I'm going to have to focus a little bit more here because I have four hearts, so I can't really make a mistake, otherwise sure. I die. I have pretty decent equipment, but I'm mainly, I'm still going to have to play pretty well. Yeah, I should have honestly had a fairy. Hopefully I'm not going to choke. We'll see what happens. Um, because I would are... like to make it to, uh, to, to Dark Beast. I was going to say, you are not in a rush. We are not... No, I'm, I'm usually not supposed to probably be here at this state. Right. Um, but yeah. So I'm saving here because I want to start, no matter what, these fights off with um, a trick. And I'm just going to do this and then let it speak for itself. So I shot an arrow there. That's the important part. I shot an arrow into the arena. And um, 
Now we are going to be fighting Wind Blight Ganon because when you get uh, to this, these boss fights and you haven't beaten the Divine Beast yet, the, the Blights show up here. Right. So now Wind Blight Ganon is dead and we are fighting Water Blight Ganon. Okay, so the reason, so this was the skip, right? Uh, we basically skipped an entire boss fight there. So we skipped Wind Blight Ganon. What happened there in this cutscene? Uh, <laughs> was basically uh, because I shot that arrow into the arena and then entered the, uh, the boss fight, the arrow was stuck in uh, the air, constantly damaging Ganon. It was oh. stuck there and the hitbox was active, constantly damaging the Blight. So by the time the cutscene was over, he had already lost his health completely. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, that's bad. I don't even know if I survived this. I was too close there. Uh, barely. Not a good start to the fight. I actually overestimated the power of uh, the Master Sword. Instead, what I'm going to be using more now is the good old spin-to-win technique I talked about earlier. Right. Uh, specifically because I have these strong claymores now. Right. Um, using spins is really strong. Again, I keep thinking of the term the montage video now. <laughs> True. It, it's going to be somewhat like that. The master mode run that I talked about earlier here is even crazier. Because that Lionel bow is just so strong. Mm, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, these threads are going to be a little random. This is not usually the equipment I have in any percent. This is just random strong equipment, so it should still be fine. The one thing I'm a little um, con uh, like conscious about is... Um, Calamity, because Calamity is always hard. Mm -hmm. But again, this is just a lot of damage. The combination of um, 72 damage weapon with attack up food, uh, which oh, gives yeah. you a 50% attack buff. That's like 100 damage every hit. These blights have like between 800 and 1,200 health, so it's pretty fast. It's really, yeah, it's really, really fast. That's wild. Thunderblight is a little scary, so I hope that goes well. Which one? Thunderblight. Yeah, Thunderblight is the worst. Absolutely. Definitely a scary fight. Yeah. For first timers, it can be brutal. Definitely. Uh, the funny thing is actually in this arena, Thunderblade is arguably easier. Um, I can because, see that you don't have like the weird mm -hmm. angles and things you have to climb up for him. The arena is a huge reason that Thunderblade is hard. Mm. Oh. Yeah, in, I, that uh, would make sense. <laughs> so far, so good. Here we go, halfway. Awesome. So this is where the um, the boomerang is going to come into play. By uh, waiting for Thunderblade to do this attack, I can use the boomerang throw to break his shield, then headshot him, then go for four attacks. <laughs> Break his shield again, and then go for the spin to win strat. Wow. <laughs> the only problem I is, I know it feels so great to just destroy this guy after suffering so much when you first like try and beat him. Uh -huh. So the problem is Ganon. Um, Ganon is a pushover when you actually play the game, but when you um, when you are this weak. He is actually not weak. Because okay. uh, he has a lot of health. If we don't beat the Blights, he starts the fight on full HP. Right, so it's a lot harder. It's a lot, it's harder. A lot more to do. A lot more damage to do, exactly. Yeah. I'm gonna try to... Um, do you ever counter him? I'm gonna try to uh, use the Master Sword a lot more. The okay. Master Sword being on... Uh, 
60 damage is actually pretty helpful. For right. This. Adds a lot of extra DPS. Oh! I will forget about Flurry Wrath. You ever counter his, um. Like the beams, basically? That's not good. Um, we need to parry one laser later. Parry. To be fair, it is 7 a.m. Maybe my reflexes are a little bit worse than usual. <laughs> Hopefully, that's not too bad because. Can't really mess up the parries. Right. Yeah, I'm definitely jumping too early right now. Hopefully I get that better. <laughs> the thing is in normal mode, surprisingly phase two is actually easier because we get to do a specific trick. Uh, I'm jumping way too early. Mm -mm. Why don't you not take damage? Watch somebody's actually good at this game. Like, this should yeah. at least be the end of phase. Okay, I needed one hit. This should at least be the end of phase one. Phase two is gonna be the important part. Refreshing. He did give me the laser, which is important. Okay, I really need yeah. to focus on this for a bit. Nice. Oh. Okay, I'm not sure why that happened. Uh, if I did it right, I should have been able to stunlock him. I guess we mm. need to play a little bit better now. You got this. That was my bad. I, um... Oh. That's unfortunate. I um, tried to parry those lasers there to get him from the wall, right. which I shouldn't have done because the only reason you want to get him from the wall is um, the only reason you usually want to get him from the wall is um, what you call it. Because like it's to break his invincibility, or uh, yeah, exactly. Because in in sorry in master mode, um, he regenerates health there. So you want to get him from the wall as soon as possible. You mm -hmm. can get him from the wall here early to save time, which is nice. Um, but it's very risky. Because yeah. like with my HP right now, um, if I miss a parry, if I make a mistake, I just die. Got you. Do you and, have any uh, meals to help you? Or any you no, I, I, I go for something else instead. I go for um, a little bit of a different equipment up upgrade. Gotcha. That should help me. Um, what I will need is um, a second bow, a second mm -hmm. Royal Guards bow, uh, which is the bow I've already used a lot in that previous fight. Um, that allows me to basically make phase one guaranteed. I, I, I was actually playing well until that point. It's just that with this fight, if you make a mistake, it's just, it, that's it's, it. It's because cool. you will get one shot. Uh, there's no like one shot protection. And... Um, how much damage? You will lose all progress. How much damage does he typically do per hit? I don't, honestly don't know because I don't like the only time I actually fight him like this is in any percent runs. In other runs, he is a complete pushover. Like I said, you never get hit because you have the yeah. Rook's protection, you have Obosa's fury. Those things will decimate him in seconds. And uh, <laughs> that's you, fair. You, yeah. And you literally don't have to worry about it ever. But right now, I have no armor. I have no. Um, oh yeah, you have no armor. Too. I have no really, real efficient ways to deal with him. So that's uh, the problem. I have no way. I have no Mifa's grace. I have no hearts. Mm -hmm. I should have definitely, like I said. Hmm, I'm thinking about this now because I just want to get it for sure next try <laughs> instead of messing around. Um, and if I want to guarantee that, I should probably get the gear, get some fairies, and then the fight is guaranteed. You can? I can, I can. Uh, I'm just thinking what the best way is to get back here. Because unfortunately, that is the most annoying position I've ever seen this Guardian in. Let's see if I survive. Barely. Um, um, yeah, it's a bummer you don't have the uh, that DLC warp thing. Yeah, I never really made it to Akala on this run. It's a beautiful region, one of my favorite regions in the game. Yeah. But it is, uh, unfortunately, not very glitch-heavy. For sure. 
It is a really cool region, actually. <laughs> a couple places we did not get to see. I'm just trying to grab some more arrows. Because I assume that the places you would use in those areas are things we've already seen a bunch. Sorry? I, I'm assuming that the the glitches you would use in the areas we did not visit are related to ones that like we've already you've already shown off a bunch. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm just trying to think where I can get the best fairies right now, and then we just refight the boss. It's like um, at this point it would just be an any percent run, but unfortunately there's just a really cool glitch at the end I would like to show. For sure. Yeah. Uh, during Calam- uh, sorry, Dark Beast Ganon. Is there any- are there any fairies in here? No, no, I have to get the fairies and then slide back. Uh, but I'll be able to slide back to the fight itself. Um, instead of like having to go through castle again. Oh, cool! Okay, makes sense. Um, the only thing I was thinking about is what fairy found to go to, because uh, I will probably go to the Gerudo one. Because uh, the fairies on the Kakariko one are probably not respawned yet. Oh. Oh, they haven't respawned. Mm, okay. Um, so the way the fairies work in this game is um, there's two factors that will decide whether you will get them or not. And the first one is um, whether you have, I think it's seven fairies or something. Or is it four? I think it's actually four. If you have four fairies in your inventory, that's it. Um, they will not spawn because the game doesn't want you to have like infinite fairies, so you basically are not afraid of dying. Uh, you can cheese that a little bit. And then they also have like a normal respawn timer, like most other items in the game. That's not actually related to the Blood Moon, like many people think. Um, it is related to just time passed in the game. Um, hello? Hello? Uh, these I wanted to sell, please. Oh, yeah, all the stones, right? And the topaz. Ah. Yeah. Yes. Ah. <clears throat> Just getting some durians, and in this case, I will actually stack up on a big meal. Ah. Uh, just to start the fight with some extra hearts, so I maybe have at least one shot protection. Mm -hmm. Then I'm Ooh. going to slide over to the fairy fountain, get the fairies, and beat again. Hopefully. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Well, actually, to be fair, I can already tell you we will never beat the game in this run. Because if we do the glitch in Dark Beast, we won't be able to. Okay. I'm excited to see uh, what it, 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 it will be worth if we get there. Um, this is the Sansi race, by the way, that you can see in the back. Mm -hmm. Which is, the, I talked about this earlier, the reason that all shrines um, became so much faster. Uh, because you can enter this shrine early. Usually you can grab this orb, you have to do Vana Boris, everything. Right. But the shrine coordinate warp I did earlier <laughs> uh, allows us to not have to deal with that anymore. So here I'm actually using these spins just to be careful um, because if I hit the, the wall there unintentionally, I will lose my sliding state. And I don't want that because I want to slide all the way into the sandstorm. Mm -hmm. some fairies. You know exactly which direction to go. <laughs> I think. <laughs> okay. The second you enter the sandstorm here, it usually clears up for a second. Right. Like here. Oh, weird. So even though it gets bad again now, we've already seen where we have to go. Oh, it's just right here? Yes. Oh god, I thought it was so much farther. <laughs> oh. And again, I'm going for those little hops. Right. Mm, do I wait for this fairy to come down? Or am I trying to catch it? Nice. Okay, I got it. Four fairies. We should be pretty stacked. We go back to the fights. Nice. Another one again. Yeah, I think we that'll have two be great. now. Ganon should be an easy one shot this time. And, um, and then we get and to not, see how not, you're not, not going to beat the game. And then we're going to see how I'm not going to beat the game. If we make it to the Dark Beast, that would be great. If you'd let me. Calamity. <laughs> yeah, this is the thing, honestly, when... Um, I'm not going to make excuses for myself, but when uh, 
you're tired this fight is pretty hard um yeah, sure. the, the this is also usually even though i highly recommend people to learn the speed game it's amazing and there's so many things you can do in it um this is tough this is where most people get stuck for a little bit when you learn the any percent speed run because thing? yes because um you don't have the equipment that I have here. You have even more specific equipment. Right. Um, and the problem is when you practice this, you, whenever you die to Ganon, you will start at the first blight. So there's gonna be that point where you kind of know already how to beat the game. You kind of know how to beat the blights, but you just can't practice Ganon because every time you get there, he does an attack that you didn't know yet. And uh, you're at the beginning mm. again. It's really frustrating. That's annoying, for sure. It's definitely super annoying. Okay, so, so this should be the file. While you're problems. starting this, um, for those who are interested in getting me the speedrun, what do you think is the first like piece of tech that they should work on? Piece of tech they should work on? Yeah, um, the new today. Probably still, and I, that might sound a little surprising because I said I didn't, um, I don't use them as much anymore. Probably still the wind bomb. Uh, it's it's something. It's an it's an easy transition from casual playthrough into speed running because you can do a casual playthrough and add wind bombs to it. Um, it will be very natural because it's going to be a super useful. Wow! Thank you, Windblade, for not dying and giving me some extra time. To explain, uh, it will, you can use it smoothly in your casual playthrough, just by going from shrine to shrine uh, and stuff. Did I not eat my attack up potion? Okay, I did. Um, and stuff. Okay. And then okay. when you work on speedruns, you already know how to um, win bomb, right? Yeah. Yep. And then you can just use that. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. That's super fair. Uh, I, that's, this is how most people that I know uh, got into the run. Like they just did wind bombs casually and they were like, well, actually, since I know them now, I might as well try to speed run. Yeah, that's fair. Because it can help. You see, you're saying it's like the best tech that would just help initially with right. multiple yeah. types of areas. And it makes your it makes your casual like you don't need to speed run to, to enjoy it. Yeah. It just makes it like um, yes, obviously there's like horses and stuff, um, but it just makes it so much more enjoyable when you already when you've already played the game and you want to get to that main story content again. You want to go to those get to those shrines again to those Lionel fights. Being able to reach those faster by just flying through the air is a it's a it's a huge bonus. I think. Yeah, that's fair. Some people are just gonna want like the slow burn. I'm gonna run there. I'm gonna ride my horse. I want to climb I mean, a mountain, but you know. I think I think that's <laughs> super important for your first casual playthrough, yeah. right? Because that's like where the where the love for the game comes from for, sure. for many people. Having cool down the road, yeah, it's been really cool. Yeah. But um, once you do that second one, that might be a good time to add those wind bombs mm -hmm. to the mix. We have a question, chat. Um, is there a go-to extreme completionist run to check out first? Like, like a hundred percent run, you think? Um, I mean, there is a one hundred percent run. Yeah, I'm just trying to clarify the question. Um, but it's um, again, it might not satisfy because it technically still, it even still doesn't complete everything. So the only thing there is right now is there's a bunch of people and I might do this as a channel challenge in the future. Like um, basically. And yeah. it is getting to the point where this is possible. Uh, it used to be impossible. There has been a couple discoveries that make it seem possible now. Uh, for example, a classic one is um, fairies. Like I just said, fairies usually don't respawn. Uh, there's a new glitch now that allows you to get 999 fairies. Uh, <laughs> another big one is a giant ancient course. They have a horrible, horrible drop rate. Um, and it's going to take you hours and hours and hours to get um, to get enough giant ancient uh, cores to have 999. But it's a challenge that a couple of people are working on. There's some people on YouTube that are technically working on that. Mm. But 100% is like the run that does the most game content. Gotcha. Right. Yeah, of course. 
Yeah, but like I've, I've heard, I've just heard people say, well, like, oh, I see 100%, but they, they still don't really do everything. There's stuff missing, which it, I guess is fair, but it's not really possible any other way. Like, 100% already has to be done TA with, with breaks, because it's literally unhealthy if people do, like, 20-hour runs in one sitting. Right, yeah, for sure. It is definitely not good for your health. Um, also thinking, like... I'm trying to get 999 of all items. It's ridiculous! Like, well, how would you... How would you do weapons for that? Uh, weapon for what? For that kind of category. Um, for 100%. Like a max percent, if you were... Oh, you would probably, um, I mean, you can't, you can't have all weapons at the same time. Right. Uh, that's the same thing. That's why I said, technically, if you really want to be, if you really want to take it to the max level, I guess uh, one, the true max percent run is impossible. Also, I might have to be a little bit more cautious about when I talk because it's this guy sure. again. Um, yep. Okay, well, here's what I can say in the meantime. Um, so, yeah, let me see this talking about all these awesome tutorials that you can go check out. Um, and lots of content here. I agree with chat as well. The Breath of the, Breath of the Wild community seems really welcoming and um, speedrunning communities in general are often like very like, hey, yeah, join us. Like we've done a lot. We like to explore a lot. Like they're interested in, in helping other people learn the game or anybody who likes the glitch hunt or anything like that. Like, or if you ever find anything weird that happens in the game, like tell the speedrunning community, they want to figure that out. Um, so there, there are a lot of tools at your disposal for speedrunning in general, and especially with Zelda games, because they're so incredibly popular, which makes them so incredibly broken, because a lot of people are putting all that time and energy into it, um, figuring out how do I get to the map? How do I break down the code? Like, how do I do this and that with it? Um, <clears throat> so yeah, there's there's definitely tons you can do. Going to speedrun.com um, will often have, you know, not only the leaderboards and rules, but uh, there's a lot of, like, links to discords, and you can check out those communities, and... Um, check out all the categories that they accept and and, uh, and things like that. And, and Lim here is one of the best for sure, um, which you can see if you go to speedrun.com, um, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to have him on the show because you know I, I try to pick people who are really going to know what they're talking about. Uh, so really, uh, I was very very excited for Lim to come on because it's like like what o'clock, <laughs> like middle of the morning. Um, you know, so uh, like a really nice thing to do. And again, like, I love this game and, and it's great to see so many of you all who are in here enjoying this. And I think that, you know, if you've seen all these things before, like you've been in a stream and I'm sure it, it's been cool, but I, I'm guessing that even watching his stream, like maybe you've been able to learn something new because, you know, get to slow things down and, and see uh, what's going on here. And it looks like he's done with his face. So I'm going to hand it off back to him. <laughs> Thank you for carrying me there. The, what I did there, if you saw it in the background, it actually requires a little bit more focus. It's uh, called the stun lock. Mm -hmm. So by um, spin attacking and then always um, basically ending your spin attack on a specific like time, you are able to... Um, to stun lock Ganon. So I was basically constantly slamming down my weapon at the same time there. And that allowed me to constantly break his shield like constantly break and then re-break his shield i actually almost got sniped there that's a very rare occasion the good thing is even if i miraculously die to dark beast ganon the biggest pushover in the game there and i don't get that like that's confusing to me because here they put a safe like mm -hmm. they put an auto save here where if you somehow die here they will spawn you back at the beginning of uh, dark beast ganon but for calamity they are just ruthless and they're like oh you have to do everything again Mm -hmm. But I guess, like, the only r reason I guess I can understand why is um, because um, <laughs> uh, I guess they didn't want people, they wanted people to more likely beat the Divine Beast. So they were like, okay, so we actually have to do this. Um, so we're going to make it really hard for you to beat it any other way. Yeah, that's fair. Okay. So, uh, Ipona, I didn't you actually want, want you to come anymore? here. So uh, this might take me one, three uh, attempts, one to three attempts. Uh, and this is what we did earlier in Cryonis. You can maybe oh. already kind of tell where this is going. Yeah, I Because can tell this you barrier is probably easier to clip through than the barrier in Wind Waker. Like this. Um, it is uh, just shield clippable. And what makes this interesting... You can't go any further. Is, 
I cannot go any further, but I um, am now on a different map, and this is very oh. interesting. So the Dark Beast Ganon boss fight, even though it is on Hyrule Field, is on a specific map uh, where the game doesn't really exist. So, so for example, this tower, you can already room. tell, is pretty broken. Um, if you have made it to this tower before in your casual playthrough, um, you would know that there's guardians here that attack you. So on not this not. map, not only are some things not existent, uh, but enemies belong to those things. So there's no enemies. The only enemies that are in this map are um, random enemy spawns. Like sometimes on the ground there will be sort of pebblets, there are the mini taluses. Those exist in this map. But every spawn that's static, that's always there, is gone. With the one exception of overworld bosses, like Hinoxes and Taluses do exist, but every normal enemy is gone. And um, you can actually explore the entirety of Hyrule and see some really strange things. I'm going to focus on one thing to end today's showcase, which is I'm going to go back to the boss fight and see what's, what's going to happen there. Um, but um, yeah, one example that I can explain, uh, if you have learned how to shoot, you see this is a random spawn, which is why the choo choo is actually there. But one cool example for this is if you... Also, I have the bow of light with me, by the way, which is kind of nice. Uh, I can use that in the game. Unfortunately, there's no enemies to use it on. Um, this is wild. It's so there's actually a different glitch where you can take the bow of light on a new save file. That's really cool, but it takes it takes like hours. I've done it once and I will never do it again. Does it have durability? I assume it doesn't. It doesn't. It has a durability value uh, um, assigned to it, but it doesn't lose it. So you can shoot it infinitely. Huh. And it would kill, like, everything. Pretty much. Yeah. Hurry! <laughs> Hurry! <laughs> this is wild. Uh, looks like I was in a glitched state there and couldn't wind bomb, but let's try it again. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, I love that like certain enemies will actually spawn here, but um, the other ones won't. It's... it's only the ones that are like random. So in yeah. this game, there's like static enemies, uh, which will always be at the same sp uh, spot. They will respawn if there's a Blood Moon. For example, the Guardians in Hyrule Castle are static enemies. Do we see any Guardians here? Nope. <laughs> they don't exist because they are static enemies. So I want you to specifically focus on the audio here once we've made it back to the boss fight. Okay. I feel like this narrative of what you're doing right now lines up incredibly well with the whole experience people go through playing this game. Whereas Definitely true. Zelda's like, Zelda's like, hurry, I Please can't let me. Oh, I'm sorry. And Link's like going around like fooling a dude into giving him his shoes and... <laughs> Look at that. Oh my gosh. We got a pretty good view there of Dark Beast. We've made it pretty far now. He's uh, doing we... good job. Pulling him in there. He's still trying. Oh, he's still trying. This is actually an extremely common mistake. If you've ever wind bombed, you know this too well. Uh, sometimes the bomb that you use to hit Link is still somewhere out there, hasn't quite despawned yet. And you mm. try to do that wind bomb, and you realize, oh. It was still sitting somewhere, so you blow up the bomb instead of um, you blow up the bomb instead of actually uh, using it as a projectile. So okay. let's focus on the audio here. It's gonna be a little bit eerie. We can still see that something is happening there, but uh, we have now officially reached the castle again, and the music has stopped. Ugh. Now there's a hole in the ground. Creepy. Which is interesting, and it looks like. Wait, this is actually extremely interesting. Wow. So the the walls are still up too. It's almost like the boss fight is still going on. Oh. Um, but yeah, the thing is. Um, 
this is exactly the area between um when we go here again we get our dark beast music again the fight kind of restarts and if we go back out the music stops again i think it should about it should happen about here there's actually a laser stuck in there. It's really broken. The one thing I quickly want to mention about this state, which I won't be able to show off today, oh. is um, when you um, go, and this is a niche fact, when you go to Lurline, which is that little like fishing village, mm -hmm. um, and you play the the little mini game where you have to open the chest and you can like make this like a gamble mini game or whatever. Um, if you manage to uh, if you just play that game, um, the kind of entire overworld resets. Right now, I'm technically not allowed to warp. If I play that mini game, you're actually allowed to warp around in this world. You can technically save on this world, and then you have a file where Dark Beast is constantly just chilling on Hyrule Field. Uh, it's an interesting file to keep. Can you, if you just walk, can you just walk back through the barrier? And uh, the Dark Beast boss fight. Yes. I could probably clip back in and then beat the fight eventually. I don't know the clip setup to do that, but I guess it's technically possible. But once you're on the other side of the barrier like you are now, you can't just walk back through it. Like You can't walk. No, you would have to clip again. Oh, interesting. Because the collision is active on both sides. Oh. Uh, one thing I would like to try is I'm actually not sure if there's barriers up here in this little window. Uh, because if you do this... In a, on a file where you've already um, completed... Wait, let me try this out. This is like a final testing thing. Maybe we learned something new in the process. <laughs> um, if you do this glitch on a file where you have already beaten the Blights, uh, which is the, the boss fights I did at the beginning of this, like the, the boss fights that you usually do in the Divine Beasts, you can actually enter the boss fight arena again. I want to try if I can do that on this file too, by going through this hole. No, okay, they did actually secure that too. Mm. Um, if you do that, I guess that's only possible once you've beaten the Blights. Um, okay. Ganon, the Ganon cutscene plays, but Ganon is invisible. He's already considered as broken, and you're basically stuck. You're stuck oh. forever in that, like, room. You, you could technically, like, again, like, restart or something like that. But uh, the game has remembered that you've beaten Ganon. But it has it, it's still in the state where the fight is not completely over yet. Mm -hmm. That was pretty messed up. Um, but I guess that's only the case when you've beaten the Blights. So we okay. can't see that either. But uh, it's interesting to know that there is basically... And I, I, I call this a different map. I think the way this really works is, like... Uh, also, for example, it doesn't show shrines, like shrines don't exist here. The, rate is, the way this really works um, is, um, and I can't leave right now, apparently too, I'm stuck here. Um, the way this really works is, um, there's probably just flags. So the game sets flags, like don't, while the Dark Beast fight is active, don't spawn shrines, don't spawn enemies. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. those flags are just active now. Okay. And if you do go way far enough, uh, the music stops, um, and you can explore this world. Does the music stop everywhere, or will it still work in, uh, in its respective areas, like it did with the castle? Yeah, I think it, it's like a... I don't know if there's like a circle, but for example, in Lurline, wh where that, um, that chest mini game is, the music is not active there. Um, and it's not active at the castle. Mm. But it's an interesting, uh, an interesting um, little detail that this exists you can leave the arena when i first did this i honestly thought this should be way more broken uh, because the game looks so weird but the one cool thing about this is if you ever bored and you want to learn how this is done if you play that mini game uh, in Lurline and you uh, allow yourself to warp, this is actually a pretty interesting way to explore the game. It's almost like the peaceful Minecraft mode yes. because there's no enemy, so you can just like literally just focus on like, yeah, the uh, the nature. Can you, can you do shrines in this game? No, or? because um, the shrines—that's another thing. They they are they are also not loaded. What about Korok no. dudes? Good question. I'm pretty sure they're not loaded. Uh, is there I, we can, you could look for? I know where there's yeah, I know where one is. Actually exactly where these trees are, there's a Korok seed. Huh, okay. This is so interesting. Okay, there's there's something that would technically try to attack you, but 
Uh, looks like they are not here, because usually exactly here, there's a rock. Oh, interesting. And I definitely haven't gotten that on this file. So I guess Korok Seeds right. is another thing they disable the flex for. Um, the only thing that really stays are these random enemies. Right. You were saying. Uh, one thing that might still be interesting, uh, let me see if I can make it. This uh, is so fascinating. <laughs> I know, I know. This is this will happen forever. Um, is one cool thing is if you fight an overworld boss, like a Hinox, mm -hmm. um, because Hinoxes have health bars just like Dark Beast Ganon does. Oh, so yeah. So the health bars become a little bit strange. Wait, so they are here though, even though they're yeah, the overworld be? bosses are the overworld bosses are the one exception. Okay. Um, to the rule. I'm trying to remember. Oh, I think it's right over there at that like empty space. Uh, when I first did this, I was really hoping that maybe we can glitch the game in a way where if you beat an overworld boss, it actually damages Dark Beast Ganon because they share the health bar. Oh, yeah. But it doesn't work like that. It just gets pretty glitchy. I'll show you that. Okay. And then I think we'll wrap it up here. Okay. This has been so fun. I know that there's more to show off too, I'm sure. <laughs> there's. Yeah, we, like I said, about some of the glitches, I could hold like a TED talk, essentially. <laughs> this is so fun, though. Oh, we get a remix now. See, the, the Hinox is already like halfway done. And now he didn't take damage, which is weird. Yeah, yeah. He still doesn't take damage. And I think it's going to update in the second tier. Yeah, he's, he's dead, but the health bar is still there. That's so strange, okay. Oh, oh, and see, now it looked like Dark Beast Ganon took a bunch of damage, but he didn't. I don't know. It's just strange. Oh, no, yeah, and it goes back up for him. Yeah. That's so strange, okay. It also was a good showcase of how strong the Bow of Light is. That's 100 damage with, yeah. with like, 50 damage multiplies, and the range is like this. That's the most damage you can do in the game, correct? It's, uh, in terms of base damage, it's up there. Yeah. Uh, the highest base damage um, you can get is... Once you play the game a lot, weapons kind of like modifiers on them. And these Royal Guards Claymores can go up to like 118 damage or something crazy. But, um, 118. Okay, 18. Okay, get it. Yeah. Yeah, wow. A lot. Holy moly. Huh. <laughs> but yeah, it's also interesting to know that you can't warp in yeah. this until you play that mini game. So it's pretty bugged. Yeah, just but just like the fact that you're that you're so broken out of this area and it just decides to be like you can do this, you can't do this. This exists, this doesn't. Like what's and actually then again, like, why? Um exactly. Like for example, these guys are here. This is a random spawn. Right. These little pebblets. And um What's also interesting is that some NPCs are there too. It's, it seems to be, it seems like that this world has inconsistent rules, which makes complete sense because obviously this is not something they expected players to explore. Right. Um, they just wanted to probably make sure to like save resources here or something like that okay. uh, while you fight Dark Beast Ganon in the overworld uh, in, Hy in Hyrule Fields. That's just what I'm assuming. Is everybody at every village spawned in or only some people? Uh, some people, and it's also strange, like, for example, the shop vendors. Uh, I was trying to go to one quickly, but I can't really set up a slide here. I haven't really prepared for this. Um, like, some of the shop uh, vendors, they actually spawn in for, like, one second when you want to buy something, and then just kind of phase out of existence afterwards. Oh. Also, doing wind bombs in this mode is actually a lot harder, and you know why? Why? Because the map is gone. And now I can't see where my card and the angles are. Oh, oh, yeah! You, so you can't actually... So I basically have to guess. Like, I don't exactly know always at, at where north is and where my oh. directions are. What you could do is, is always drop a bomb first when you're That's Exactly. That's yeah. actually what, something that people do in uh, Hyrule Castle, where the map gets replaced by the castle. Mm. And you also can't see... Yeah. Which is nice. We're, we're finding some new shrines here. Oh! I guess this is where the Monyatoma Shrine would That's be. That's where it's supposed to be. So it's the same thing with towers. What happens if you haven't activated a tower yet? Can you you can't climb them, or are they also unloaded? Um, yeah. So you can get on the top, but the, the the activation terminal is just not there. It's actually funny that we found this. Like I'm literally basically inside it, but it's not there. So strange. <laughs> Hmm. 
pretty broken. Wow. I'm, I'm just like, oh, what else can we do? Like, where else can we go? I know, I know. That's the natural reaction. What happens if we try to go to um, the uh, the island in the in the southeast Eventide corner? Eventide Island. Oh, the music. Yeah, Eventide. Yes. Um, Eventide Island, I think, um, does not get activated. So as can well. you just go and land there, and then nothing happens? I'm pretty sure, yeah. Hmm. Uh, we made it to another space where apparently the music is not active. And now that we're already sliding here. I don't know if there's ev any music. Actually, I think there is. Yeah, okay, I already hear new music. There we go, yeah. Um, yeah, I think now that we are here, every all that's going to change is that there's just not going to be any shrines. I mean, we can see. Um, I guess we're exploring just a little more. Uh, I want to see... Now I'm curious myself, uh, because I haven't completely researched everything about this state. Right. If, um, if for example, so when you first go to Rito Village, usually there would be a cutscene quickly introducing the Vine Beast Var Meadow. Uh, will that still play? We are about to find out. Which NPC Ooh. is going to be there? Is it going to be a ghost town? Oh yeah, who's actually... So we can already it? see the shrine isn't there. <laughs> so weird. This is so weird. And we just discovered the village. So the question is, will there be the cutscene in about and now? Looks like it will be. Will it look normal? We'll see. Yeah. That looks not very normal to me, actually. It so looked like it was like deactivated. <laughs> That's maybe because it checked for the cutscene. I, I feel like that cutscene looks different for me. Maybe it's like the 8 a.m. placebo. Oh. Are you so far from Ganon that his HP bars just goes away? I mean, it, it will. It, yeah, they, it will just be unloaded for now. But um, it will. It will not. Uh, it, it's just not loaded. But it will not go down. It will. So the game will remember. There. When you go back. Is there, it technically there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we can see this is a ghost town. now, technically, but the shopkeepers in this game are so dedicated. Okay. If you do want to buy something, eventually they do show up. If I remember correctly. Um, hello? Can I buy something? Maybe that only worked on the one on Lure Line. I know it worked on Lure Line. Maybe the items here are too high up. This is yeah, so like a, odd. Because there's like an invisible wall here. Mm, oh, you know what? Maybe the guy that sells the clothing would work. Um, so, oh. uh, so... One team just showed us an example of fighting a Hinox, and um, their bar and title will overwrite Ganon's yeah. temporarily while they're fighting, and then if you beat him, it still just shows Ganon's underneath again. So, it uh, looks like it doesn't work here. I, the, I, I got this to work in Lurline, where there's this uh, person that sells fish. They actually showed up um, for like a second and asked you, hey, do you want to buy something? And if you say no, they just disappear again. It does look pretty fun. But uh, oh, it looks like this is just a ghost town in this stage. <laughs> nobody, nobody here. Oh, strange, dude. <laughs> this is where we would usually uh, talk to the to the oh, chief. The collision is not loaded in either. So then will um, uh, the other guy be gone in light range? Yeah, he would only spawn after we talk to Saki here oh, right. he and watch the memory. Right. Um, but she is not here, and the chief is not here, so we can't start the quest. No one's here. So odd. Yeah, what happens if you set it a fire? That's a good question. We can try that too, but let me see. Is the fire on? Yeah. Yep. It's not a good time apparently right now. Oh. Uh, to do that, unfortunately, because I guess the game still thinks we're fighting Dark Beast. It's like, go fight him! Zelda's done. Yep. Oh, can't do it on her own. But at least we don't have to hear her, like, turning yellow. And the music maybe got a bit repetitive, too, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> really, it's really good music and awesome when you're fighting him. I agree, I agree. Because it's epic, but then you're like, all right. <laughs> I'm not there anymore. I've had enough of this now. I'm not even fighting him. <laughs> Leave me alone. Oh, can you enter a Divine Beast? I don't know if it'll spawn in. No. Because the Divine Beast is also tied to an NPC. Uh, like maybe if I had previously 
activated a divine beast and got it to the state where you could enter it by warping in. Right. And then you did the little glitch with the gambling chests and then you can warp again. Maybe you can warp in. Will you be able to fight the boss? Maybe, maybe the same thing would happen where... With a Hina? When you try to beat... No, no, no. Maybe when you try to beat the boss, it's invisible because the game remembered that you've technically beaten the boss in Hyrule Castle. Mm. Uh, there's definitely lots of things to try. You can. I could spend like 40 hours here and trying things. Um, if you wanted to know how to escape this boss fight, uh, what you have to search up on YouTube is... Oh, looks like that Divine Beast is still chilling. Um, you would have to look up... See, this is what I mean. It is broken. Is he going backwards? Hello? Is... Hello? Vito? Is he going backwards? What? What's going on? He disappeared. Uh. uh. <laughs> what? Wait, what? Hello? Hello? Oh, it's us. <laughs> Very suspicious. Um, but if you want to do this yourself, you would have to uh, search up the um, tutorial for ESC, Extended Shield Clip. That's the glitch you need to uh, clip through the barrier. That's so strange. This is really cool. This is honestly really cool. Yeah. Looks like the fairy fountain is gone too. How much have you personally explored here? In this mode, think... less than less than two hours. Uh, okay, because so, the, the... I know, you know a lot, so it seems like you've talked to the community a lot about what's possible. Yeah, here. exactly. Like the only thing that people, I think people have explored this mode a lot, and the only real interesting thing was playing the Lurline gambling mini game, which gives you the ability to warp back. Right. Um, because when you play the mini game, the entire world reloads to make sure that there's actual RNG in terms of mm -hmm. what chest will contain the reward. And that will also reset that flag that you can't warp. So you can warp and that's the only change. And I'm also, when I heard that, I was like, there is, there's no way, there's gotta be more. And maybe there is, maybe there is. Um, but like I said, we could probably explore this world. This is a new world. Like yeah. that's why I think this is interesting because this is a new Breath of the Wild that you can explore again and find out new rules about. Or right. Made or disappearing. Right, exactly. And it looks like I don't know if it's not loaded, but maybe the the wooden stuff isn't loaded in there. I don't know. Th there's a lot to find out. But I think this is also where we can probably um <laughs> wrap up, I guess, maybe. Wrap up and uh just tell people um that you can go out and explore this world yourself.